Uh, how's it uh, going, Corey? How you feeling? I'm a little roughed up, but I'm doing okay. Good. I'm sorry to hear what happened. That's crazy. It's one of those things, man. It's just <laughs> just compounding interest on an already expensive year. It's the 90s percentile curse. <laughs> yeah. You got some hospital stuff to take care of. Uh, well, I went and got x-rays the other day, but no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I checked out. Okay. For the most part. Okay. Car accident, right? Yeah. Got hit by a car. Um, and so waiting to find out what the, the status is of my car that is still being paid off. Oh yeah. That's so, uh, every, why is everything so stressful? Why is there literally (laughs) nothing that doesn't cause stress? You know, if I don't poop blood, then I don't know that I'm alive. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you can't even go to the beach. You can't even do something nice without that being stressful. Oh, Oh, going to the beach is one of the worst. Yeah, yeah. Every everything that's nice is stressful. How do you guys start talking about the beach? I couldn't find my pants. (laughs) We covered buttholes before you even got here, Jack. (laughs) Good. I'm I'm glad you got out of your system. Covertly remove my pants and then get up at some point during the podcast and have my ass just uh, just play pro. Reason Jack was late was because he was trying to cover his butthole. So (laughs) there you go. (laughs) Always cover your ass, Uh, guys. I sent you a link to the doc. I didn't know if you already had it, Um, so I sent it to your emails. Perfect. If you want it, yeah, of course. I watched Jaws Friday night, uh, Thursday night. It was it was fun. I watched it at 8 a.m. this morning. I forgot about sleeping for four hours. Yeah, I, I finished last night at about 2 a.m. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, and I then I put lot. stories in. Ugh. We we played a show last night. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I figured I put it, better put the stories in then. Um, yeah. Xbox has Call of Duty 4 out. Uh, the you know mm-hmm. the original Modern Warfare yeah um, re- remastered or not yeah yeah so uh, I bought it and like I've been playing it nonstop it's like I'm li- I literally went back ten like I tra- time traveled ten years I'm doing the same <sighs> fucking shit I was doing when I was twenty three I'm gonna have and to buy play, I played till four in the morning last night I couldn't believe it I I haven't been up till four in the morning in months so yeah. here's here's the deal Jack more than likely I'm gonna end up beating a an Xbox on Black Friday nice then we I'll can be, be friends I'll, I'll probably be homeless by then so. Well, oh, Jesus, but you'll have an Xbox. Please don't sell your Xbox. That's my like. You buy one or I buy one and you're like, yes, I decided to sell it for baloney money. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit on the I'll sit on the <laughs> street corner collecting coins, playing Xbox. <laughs> you can be like, uh, have you ever seen that meme of the guy? He's like a he's like a big nerd on the subway and he's got like a, bower, a battery pack in his book bag and he's got it hooked up to a small TV and he's playing Xbox on the train. That's amazing. That's some of hero. us some of us have to drive our own vehicles to destinations. <laughs> <laughs> Mike actually lives uh, pretty far out from the city. He, he could town. drive if he wanted to. Yeah, but you still have to drive in to the, the city, city when you get to the city. Yeah, no, I was telling them, Jack, uh, getting driving into the city is <laughs> a nightmare. An absolute nightmare from up here. What yeah. should take 40 minutes is easily an hour and an hour and 40. Yeah. Yeah. I, I once got to my dorm, which was right around where we work. Uh, it was a Sunday morning, uh, and I got there in 19 minutes from Staten Island. It was amazing, and it was because there was no traffic. I was like, I, it literally is a 19-minute drive, but yeah, yeah. there's always traffic. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what, why there wasn't any traffic. That must have been like 9-11 or something. I don't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Actually, there was a lot of traffic on that. The, the, the anti-9-11. I don't know what that would be. The day after oh, November 9th. Yeah. <laughs> no, November 9th, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Yeah, I'll, I'll actually start recording now. Oh. Just to warm up. I just downed all my coffee. Oh, you're late. drinking coffee? Right. Yeah, a little late. I didn't have time to drink co- or make coffee, otherwise I'd probably doing that. But instead, I'm drinking beer because I guess I'm a functional alcoholic. I'm still pissed off. I just bought a coffee pot and it's broken. I don't know what. To, I guess I gotta like try to return it to Amazon. Yeah. I hate this shit. I just want to just buy another one, but I'm broke. I hate oh, returning. Amazon. What? Well, yeah. Not so give a shit. they will take anything take back. It back. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, they'll send you a new one without even send, asking you to send the old one back. Yep. Yeah, I guarantee oh. they'll just tell you to keep it and they'll send you a new one. All right. I'll, I'll, Do it. I'll, I'll work on that tonight. Do it. Drink, drink. What? 
Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones. They said during Crohn's, and I'm like, you just schedule your Crohn's? <laughs> <laughs> during my Crohn's disease treatment. During his pooping, that's when he gets all of his Amazon returns. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I do get, I get, that's where I get a lot of work done. That's yeah. very true. Our bass player has really bad Crohn's, and we were all sitting around playing uh, golf, hypothetically, last night before we went to the show, and he just like stood up and beelined it into the bathroom, and then I heard what I can only presume is the sound of a slaughtering cow. Oh God! Yeah, the, the sound that Jack was making earlier when he signed it. <laughs> <laughs> what was the sound I made? Did I fart when I was signing? No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, your computer. <laughs> yeah, right, I was fuck- say, that wasn't me. Nah, let's fucking do this. All right. I'm so happy you can't hear my computer. <laughs> God damn, Jack. <laughs> Welcome to episode 99 of the Podcast of Dare, production of the Galactic Network. I'm your host, Pat Stein. With me, as always, is Corey. Ah, uh, it stings when I pee, Scott. <laughs> I almost brought cranberry juice for the what's you drinking today. Uh, just <laughs> because, to, because of your urethra problems? Yes. I, I have had kidney stones. I found that out in the Deep South one time. The doctor was not very kind to me. Is the Deep South a butthole? Yes. It is. Okay. And when I say one time, I mean all the time. I'm literally in a butthole right now. Mm. Mm. It's a tasty place to be. <laughs> For more on this podcast, including show notes, content information, and subscription links, uh, you can contact us. I don't even fucking know what's going on anymore. I imagine in a wallpaper pop. like in Willy Wonka where you lick it and it takes <laughs> oh, like a second. Um, yeah, gncast.com slash pod. You can chat with us. Uh, gncast.com slash sign up. Subscribe to our newsletter butthole newspaper um we have two guests this week one of which is returning sex icon that's the only way i can describe him look at that i, I do have a sex <laughs> and, and, an you're, you're, and an eye <laughs> but it's all one big con oh ah it's jack mccone he's our good old hey, buddy over from going, uh, worst episode ever 90s percentile and um if you listen to it as much as i do you hear dan say we podcast.com in your sleep <laughs> I literally was typing up the show notes and I'm like, oh, Jack McCone. And then I just went, wepodcast.com. <laughs> that's, 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 it's, it's by Menon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're trying to do. How are you, Jack? Uh, uh, by the way, I'm also enjoying some cranberry juice. My urethra is fine, but it'll oh always be God. better. It could always be better. Rails. Try, just try rails. to get it as wide as possible. Our other guest <laughs> is new here. Um, friend of Jack's, I forgot to ask what else he does with his life other than failed filmmaker because I'm a terrible human being and <laughs> I'm essentially not functioning properly. But uh, Mike Walls, how are you? Good. Hey, everybody. Um, hey, I'll, yeah, I'll give you a plug for my head. Uh, no, no, don't, don't sell Mike short. Oh, no, sell, I'm sure he does a lot of great things. I just. Short. I just I had eighty seven things to do and I completely forgot to ask him uh, what he wanted for his big sexy intro. Well, I'm gonna hear Trump talk promotion. about walls since the the whole Mexico thing started. So I assume that that's <laughs> got to be promotion for Mike. My uh, my Twitter followers took a huge jump after all that. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was on Sync Points. He talked uh, he talked with us about Superman Returns. Oh, so I haven't gotten that, that one at yet. Wepodcast dot com. That's W E E podcast dot com. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm in it. Ne- never fails that anytime Jack and or Dan are on, they turn it into a wee podcast commercial <laughs> as quickly as possible. But we're yeah. fine. That. But no, Mike's a big Superman buff, so uh, he uh, de- definitely check out Superman Returns. Also, uh, you guys have had plenty of karate tortoise related guests, and Mike yes. is a, a new addition to that because he is the voice of the narrator in Karate Tortoise. Oh, uh, yeah. Nice. Oh, are you? Okay. Uh, I am, yeah. Give us a little narrator, Mike. Ah, the big city. <laughs> oh fucking a. What? I, I honestly thought it was Mike uh Mike Diaz that was doing that voice, but No, no, no. He's That's a man a of many one. talents, but not that one, yeah. Mike Diaz actually doesn't exist. It's a front from uh it's uh, it's actually Annie and, and uh Billy and everybody. Mike Diaz is just a friendly handsome face they put, you know, <laughs> just, so every time he's been on our podcast they just set up like, it's a, a hired act. cutout. They, they hired an actor. Oh, you pulled oh, down oh. the Diaz facade <laughs> and it's a crack house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It falls down, and there's like a Buster Keaton that uh, lands right where the mouth is. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Speaking of landing where the mouth is, uh, Matt, you had a busy night. I, I really did. Um, my shitty band played a shitty show in a shitty city in which I wasn't even in the door, and I heard a man threatening to beat up a girl. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's how I knew how the night was going. Um, 
slow night. Just slow. threatening. Did you step in? Were you were you a hero? Were you a no? I just kind of looked at him, and uh, so it was the it was the Main Street Music Festival in Oshkosh, which is south of where I live. And um, there's a, a a police scanner Facebook group for the area that okay. my wife likes. And she just sent me a screenshot of someone that was at the music festival who ate a pot cookie and thought they were dying, so they called the police. I'm sorry, what's a police scanner? Because is that so? Is someone that listens to a police scanner and then, and then posts what the yep. Oh, I gotta get I gotta get one for me, guys. I have like nine different police scanners, and uh, I oh, can't I have... understand a word anybody says on them. I just yeah. hear like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Is this like Paris? What? Just, just start watching live PD. All right. That's code for alley rape. That last. No, I'm definitely gonna find a find a Bay Ridge, Brooklyn uh, police scanner. So there has There's to be. A... Go ahead. No, I was gonna say there has to be a, a Brooklyn Facebook scan. You know what? That, that, we'll do it later. You're doing a show. Nope. We're doing it right uh, now. You need to Brad, stay focused, who, Matt. Brad is on Weird World Weekly with us, and also does. A uh, couple other shows here on the Galactic Network. Uh, he had hooked me up with a site called You Are Listening To. You are listening to that also has an app that plays a mix of both uh, ambient music, uh, which you can turn up and down, and police scanners from different cities. So there's one for San Francisco. There's one for Detroit, which is the one that I mostly listen to because it makes me homesick, and I like to hear people getting murdered. Uh, and I, I play this Jesus. when I sleep. <laughs> I like hearing the screen. So, so it's Damn. so you can listen to a police scanner, but it's not. It's actually pleasurable to listen to because you. Have yeah. Music. And I actually turn the music down and I I play uh, rain sounds behind it because I like to hear people getting murdered, but I also <laughs> like the stuff to wash away off the streets because so noir. The next day. Uh, New York's on there, Jack. So you can probably hear your neighbors. Oh, that's cool. I gotta check that dark. out. It's kind of real dark, real fast. <laughs> Speaking of dark. Yeah. What are you guys drinking? Black coffee, black coffee. All right, just like my soul. Uh, yeah, I'm not going not so not so dark. New Belgium fat tire or Belgian style ale. Oh, that's it. I'm really upset. I uh, <laughs> I, I bought a bunch of beer last night. I can throw in some Goldschlager if you'd like. <laughs> Are you I a 17 year old girl? <laughs> I bought session. I bought a session variety pack. Ooh. Uh, and it was supposed to last me all week, and I really <laughs> shouldn't be doing it. It's out of my budget. I drank it all last night. Now I got nothing. I got like two beers left. I was like, what's the point of two beers? <laughs> I'm so mad at you. You know what? Come over and mow believe- my lawn, and I'll send you home with a couple bottles. I-, I can't believe how much I drank last night. Just like staying up playing how much beer I have. Hours. Um, it's easy to go through a case or two when you're just sitting up playing video games by yourself. Yeah, I just, I, I could, I couldn't believe. Like I look, I like I looked in there, I saw all the empty bottles next to me. I was like, holy shit! Yeah, people really knock drinking alone, but uh, in my opinion, it's kind of if you're playing, if you're playing internet video games, you're never alone. You are not alone. That's correct. Yeah. You're with a bunch of racists. <laughs> oh my god! So um, I started playing player, player unknown battleground. Oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. So I was playing on PC and. Um, you like queue up in this this fucking island and you stand there and then when there's a hundred people you think you start the game. So anyway, so we're queued up and I just usually stand there while people punch women in the face. Not even joking. I know. I watch. I watch. I've been watching it on Twitch all week. <laughs> yeah, and I, and this this Asian fellow just ran around going, Korea number one, China <laughs> number four twenty. <420." laughs> I can almost guarantee you it wasn't an Asian guy. It was like oh no, I'm sure it was just a fat white guy yeah. doing it at home. It was me. It was me. <laughs> it was you. It was you. <laughs> uh, Corey, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking uh, brown water, which is just basically raw sewage. Uh, oh, lifted the nice. Rain tea. has washed the streets of Detroit dry. Um, this is no, it's it's lifted. Lifted. Um, I got uh, Goat Collector from Pipe Works in Chicago. Which is almost gone because we talked far too much before we started recording. <laughs> and um, the old backup is this damsel in distress from friend of the show and listener Mike, who sent me a bunch of beer. I'm going to send you beer one day. I promise. Some Bronx. No, that's fine. I mean, fucking take your I'm time. Do it. I'm Jack, probably we would. We would much rather have you show up and drink our beer. Yeah, <laughs> and I will buy beer specifically for that. Okay, All right. that's a big. You buying beer for me is that's a very uh, noble gesture. I appreciate that. Jack, I will. Oh, go ahead, Mike. No, no, no. That's it. <laughs> oh, I was going to say I will not buy you beer because I'm fairly certain I have over a thousand dollars in beer in my basement. So just okay. come help me drink it. Okay, that deal. Yeah. Sometimes I look that at has... what's down there and I just wonder. I question my own life. 
Matt had so much beer, he had to insure it when he moved. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely false. I insured it by putting it in my butt cheeks. <laughs> that, that's, how I, that's, how I, that's the way to kill a conversation. You just talk about butt cheeks. I mean, uh, if you look at my health insurance bills, it feels like it's in my butt cheeks. Yeah, see, I pay for because they're fucking health. me in the ass. That's a joke, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I, I, I work in the uh, health apologies health. to Corey's stepdad. <laughs> yeah, my, my stepdad, the, the avid listener of podcasts of Terror and other fine podcasts. Well, you know, I was just impressed that he thought you swore a bunch and I didn't. <laughs> but I think I was, I was bringing down property values. Anyways, let's do some news. I just died a little bit inside my mouth. Um, first up, we have uh, Eli Roth is going to be developing a horror, a history horror docu series for AMC. Um, I'm not excited. I think Eli like Roth's what, like the birth and like the life and death of Edgar Allan Poe and the you know the first uh, zombie it's, movie. It's called like the that. History of Horror Documentary. It's a series of AMC's Visionaries franchise. It's uh, called The History of Horror. It's a living record of the genre with interviews from all the greats, old and new. Uh, sadly, we lose more of these masters every year, and with them go their stories and experiences. This show will serve as a record for future generations. So it's... it's That it's, sounds awesome. It, yeah, it but sounds I like think... a great thing. It, it, I'm not sure that he's the representative that I would have chosen, yeah. but yeah. as long as he's not putting his own shit on there, that's fine. He likes good things. He just, you know, his influences are good. He just, uh, you know... And he's not even a bad filmmaker. He's just not my cup of tea. Right. That's exactly it. it I, I, I shit on Eli Roth a little bit, but uh, when we had Anthony Rouse on a little while ago, he was a big fan of of uh, Hostel, which inspired him to do some of his own work, which, right. I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal, is yeah. to be a filmmaker that inspires other filmmakers. That that says something. And so it's I dream, can't yeah. crap on Roth that much. So really they're weird. are they purposely inviting like people who are going to die soon? Because it sounds like uh, they they're dying off. We got to get their stories before it's too late. So like if if I was invited on, if I'm like say John Carpenter and I just got invited on, it's like uh oh, I'm I've got like five That's years. A to death live. sentence. Yeah, you do you do a, a history of horror docu series and then you die. That's how we pick our 90s percentile guests. By the way, we, if it looks like you're you're not going to make it till uh, 2018, we we get you on as soon as possible. Why I don't know I if I'm place? honored that you <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'm honored that you haven't asked me on recently or terrified that like I've been a on a couple ago. times. You were uh, like a month ago. I, I was actually on on 420. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Walls is the next one we got to get on. Mike hasn't been on in a, over a year, I don't think. Yeah, you, you know, Jack keeps saying, uh, oh, we got to have you on the podcast. We got to have you back on the podcast. And uh, here I sit waiting, tears filling. My <laughs> I've, I've been waiting to go back on worst episode ever. So it's uh, I know how it feels. I like I like Mike's impression of me as like a slick podcast networker from from uptown. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see in the 40s. Another decade. <laughs> have my people call your people. I need he needs to have a big like rubber cigar, though. <laughs> I haven't done my impression of Jack yet. I need to uh, kind of tune it out. I think it's gonna. It might come out in this podcast. It might be the uh, the. Birth. Oh, I'd love to see it. You're, my, Mike's a great impressionist. He does uh, a lot of people from work and uh, uh, and uh, yeah. others. Honestly, and, if I could get rich off just doing impressions of people that I only work with, then yeah, I really exactly. <laughs> that that is called voice character work. It it is how cartoons yeah. happen. So. I mean, all I need to do is spin those characters slightly and then give them a funny name and uh, <laughs> and here I come. <laughs> it doesn't then, even take that much because the, the guy who does uh, Rick and Morty pretty much does 90% of the voices and they're all mm. close to being the same, the same thing yeah, although his Dan Harmon one is impeccable uh, <laughs> for the longest time I thought it was just Dan Harmon and to hear him doing Dan Harmon sounds more like Dan than Dan does but yeah just give it a shot man yeah no I mean that's that's kind, kind of a plan um uh, I've been, I actually uh, went to England about two months ago and I've been hearing about Rick and Morty, you know, through kind of the geek circle for about how, forever long it's been on. Season three actually starts again tonight. That's right. Which I didn't tonight. know. I, I yeah. found out that this morning. I'm so excited. And so I, yeah, I went and saw a big nerd buddy of mine and he said, have you ever seen Rick and Morty? We sat down and watched like three or four episodes that night and it's become my instant mm -hmm. obsession. Um, we, uh, I had to work with a contractor at work on Thursday and Friday, and he actually, Rick and Morty came up, and he's like, oh, you got to watch this video. And it's like a seven-minute video where a guy um, 
analyzes Rick's actions and like how he says, but like the the lubba lubba wubba dub dub really means like I I love my family or it was like I hate my family or something. Um, and because the, there's later episode where like Rick is happy and he doesn't say it and he goes, I don't need to say it because everything's fine. And I'm like, holy fuck. It's like the Da Vinci Code of uh, voiceover. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say in one of the episodes, they actually do Birdman or Bird Person. One of them says in the, it's an alien language uh, phrase for I'm very, very miserable inside. Oh, I'm in great pain. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's I mean, what it is. Because uh, last weekend when I was at Warp Tour, there's a band called the Acacia Strain and they have a shirt and it just has Rick giving the finger. And on the back, it says, I'm in great pain. Nice, nice. I and almost I didn't realize it. that Rick was giving the finger when I purchased the shirt. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can totally wear this to work because people are just going to think, oh, it's just that weird guy with a shirt that says, I'm in great pain. Don't let Corey's dad say it. I, yeah. I almost bought the Rick shirt that says, your opinion means very little to me. I keep seeing it pop up on like Wood or whatever. <laughs> and I just, I totally want to wear that to work. I uh, I almost wore my Rick and Morty shirt today. I should have in honor of the, the new season. Uh, it's uh, It's the butter robot and it just says, what is my purpose? Oh God, yes! Oh man, that's My such favorite, a great yeah. gag. It just—it sums up the entire show. It just—it yeah. sums up all of life. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there, what's our purpose? We're just slicing butter. We're just—we're just. We'll just, uh, all be dead soon. Make me so. Come I, uh, I I listened to Jack and Dan's previous episode, uh, Gremlins Two. You know, to prepare, and Jack has not become any less depressed than he was in that episode. <laughs> no. So, okay. No, my life was going great then. That's the scary thing. I think this is the time to pull it out. Not my penis. I'm at my nadir right now. There was um I asked Jack to do some voiceover stuff for us for like trigger warnings, because we're like, maybe we should have a trigger warning because we swear an awful lot and you know, whatever, nip that in the butt. And there was this little ditty that I got from Jack while in between some of his takes. I don't know what this is. Just wait. This is the super economical cut here. Why the fuck is my computer not rebooting? God, I just hate everything. All right, one more time. Let me just pan this out so I can fix my fucking computer and kill myself. Leave a fucking brief suicide note. I didn't know you got that part. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> and I cut it out, and I just—it's a little file called Sad Jack. <laughs> if you can, if you can put that and record some rainfall at the same time, that will lull me to sleep beautifully. <laughs> my, like my, there was there was a brief moment at the end where it's like when Jack's like, I just don't fucking kill myself leave a brief suicide note i'm like i'm concerned <laughs> i feel bad it was very I, I, harsh I have... but very soft and easy to listen to it's, mm -hmm. it's like no country for old men <laughs> <laughs> i think jack has a wonderful speaking voice oh thank you is that saucy baritone um uh, i might as well tell this story uh, yep. it's a real quick story uh at my uh, grandmother's funeral last year they asked uh they wanted all the grandkids to participate in some way so they asked me to read the uh, the prayer or whatever the you know we somebody goes up and reads something from the bible I, I don't know how it works uh god's involved or something so anyway i go and i read this passage uh and i used like my reading voice like as if i'm you know reading a scripture and i've been to enough masses i know like the you know the inflections and stuff they use and i did, I did a decent job and I, I went back, I sat back down, and my girlfriend turned to me and goes, wow, I didn't know you could read so good. Or I, I forget what she said. She's like, wow, I, you know, you spoke really well. And I just turned to her, in the middle of this, my grandmother's funeral, and I just went, I host two podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're so surprised. <laughs> Do you know who I am? <laughs> I will destroy you. I'm Jack Picone of WePodcast.com. Yeah, we'll get we'll get Mike Wallace on sometime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, but if there's anybody who's gonna shit on what you do on your podcasts, it's you. Like you yeah. always, you talk down how you do your podcasts when you're doing your podcast. <laughs> That's true. It's called lowering expectations, guys. It's it's, it's uh, the, the only reason our fans think we're so good is because we constantly try to in instill in them that you know we're not. And then they're pleasantly surprised when the show isn't a dumpster fire. Also, it's because you sent cycle. patrons tasteful nudes. <laughs> Still waiting. Mm. One of these days, I don't like. There's gonna be like it's gonna be like, um, uh, what's that Carpenter movie with the wrestler? Um, they live. Uh, they live. Yeah. Be like they live. Oh. One day, everybody's just gonna see We Studios for what it really is. Oh. And you're just gonna see me and Dan's like hideous alien faces, and there's gonna be like a light going on. Everybody's gonna go. Oh, this is this is nothing. This is just two people talking nonsense into microphone. I don't need to waste two hours a week listening to this. 
I expect I did not expect it to go that way. I thought it was gonna be that one day I'm just gonna get a text message from you and it's just your dick. <laughs> you're, you're gonna lay it on a countertop and it's just gonna be Jack Dick on a counter. That's our third show. That's gonna be that's our follow up to 90s percent. Hey, when uh, Jack speaking Dick. of speaking, <laughs> speaking of third show, when are we doing Gremlins Three, Gremlins in Nazi Germany and Outer Space? Uh, soon. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to be taking an extended break at the end of the year and, and probably a little bit into 2018. So that'll be a good time to do it. Again, I might be homeless. So check <laughs> my need, suicide note for details. Do I, just, do I need to play Sad <laughs> Jack again? Uh, uh, but yeah, no, I do really want to do Gremlins 3, the podcast with you guys. No, please say the entire name Grem- Gremlins 3. Gremlins in Nazi Germany and outer space. That's not that's not the full name. It's going to just be the Gremlins three pot. We have much to discuss. What you need to do is make sure that podcast is released before the actual movie is. Released. That's what that's I'm true. worried about. That's what I'm worried. I'm sure there's going to be a Gremlins reboot any day now. It doesn't matter because even if Gremlins three comes out, our script is going to be so good, it's going to just everybody's going to retcon that shit right off of their fucking memories. It's It'll be like out. the Matrix sequels. Yeah, just Dirty Dozen, but with Gremlins being led by a Tom Cruise like Gizmo. And it's just Valkyrie where they go in. And they to out it. <laughs> so there's still nothing about a release date or even filming. So I think we got a solid six to eight months before Gremlins 3 comes out. Right, we'll I also feel like we can get least. Tom Cruise to play Gizmo. He's actual size. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the Church of Scientology hear you say that. Gizmo is a Scientologist. You get you didn't know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Do you he's have scientific proof to back that up? He's OT level eight. No. And if you get him wet, he's OT level nine. Jesus. Didn't, didn't, did they ever end up releasing OT9? Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I, I just make the jokes. I don't follow them. <laughs> <laughs> OT9 is the best for getting grease stains off of your oven. I, I do actually. I have been flirt. I have seriously flirted with joining Scientology. No, don't um, do it, Jack. We, could, well, we couldn't be friends anymore. They wouldn't let you talk to us. You wouldn't so be able to. Their main New York headquarters is uh, right by Times Square. It's a little bit west. It's in, it's in Hell's Kitchen where uh, their devil lives. And uh, I was dating a girl there, so I was always walking right past it. Uh, and they would always catch me because they, they look for, for uh, people who look like they're about to kill themselves. And they jump on them and they go, hey, hey, you, you want to come in and take this, uh, this electric test or whatever they do? And they, t- they, you know, they test you and they read the questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I really kind of want to do it because, you know, I mean, this was more like 10 years ago when I still had, uh, you know, it looked like my career might go somewhere. But I was like, look, I, I'm talented and I have a w- good awards. I'm a decent looking guy. Uh, maybe they will use me and boost my career like they have so many others, John Travolta and, and Tom Cruise and, and you know, and uh, Leia Remedy. And, and maybe they'll actually uh, hook me up with a good agent and get me some good gigs. And, you know, all I have to do is uh, tow the party line and I guess give them like 25% of my millions. Uh, it, it just, it seemed like the quickest way to become successful in Hollywood. I mean, so I'm not going to point at Tom Cruise or John Travolta and say, yeah, that, that's, that's for everybody. But when you look at Leia Remini's career, that took some fucking work. That that girl was like sitcom death for about the first ten years or so of her of her fucking acting ability and shit. And then just all of a sudden one day it's like, oh, let's hook her up with a fat guy as is way too hot for him wife and see what the fuck happens. And that was that became CBS's shtick for about ten years. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, nailed it. And so now she's coming back and beating the wife out of her role in the new Kevin James comedy it's like hey i know that your character's married and has kids but fuck them we're gonna bring leah remini back it's kind of insane that they did that yeah i don't know about you guys but i'd tongue plow her stink ditch <laughs> she she's always gonna be stacy carosi to me from mm, say by the summer yeah. the summer yeah week. my dream threesome kelly kapowski stacy carosi if you want to make it a foursome don't pack of tacos <laughs> <laughs> So I'm Eli like, Roth is making a docu series yeah. about the history of horror. Yeah, what's the next news item? Yeah, exactly. I was uh, just segue. So the next news story we have the um I accidentally fucking closed it because I'm half tired, half drunk. Uh, the Losers Club from the new It have chosen chosen their uh, adult counterparts for It Part Two. Um, two uh-huh. things that rustled my jimmies about this is the fact that I'm happy to see that they are not going to try and make the new It three hours long by putting the entire story into one film. Second part being is I'm glad that they're making it two films and then each half of the it story will be it'll get its it's it's due as an entire story instead of taking the whole thing and making an hour and a half long, which is what they did for the TV mini series that was two episodes like what we did with Salem's Lot last week it was two episodes mm-hmm. that put together 
you can watch all of it. Um, but the first half was about the kids, and then they introduced the adult counterparts at the end, which I'm kind of surprised they don't introduce the adult counterparts at the end of this movie. Yeah. Uh, because it sounds like from what the kids are saying is that they haven't been cast yet, unless we're getting played, and this is the actual cast for the movie, and the kids are just saying, oh, this is who I'd like to see do this. And oh. yeah. yeah. Because what if, they wait, what if they waited like 15 years and let the kids age and then had the kids play them like boyhood? But oh, yeah, but it <laughs> that would be kind of awesome. Well, I always thought that that should be a technique implemented a way more. I mean, I remember I, not okay, Richard Linklater stole that idea from me, but uh, <laughs> I remember like Don't years, say. And years and years ago, I always thought, like, why wouldn't you just plan a movie? And aside from a death, why wouldn't you have the same actor play someone 10 years apart? That would be amazing, and then you wouldn't have to. I mean, I guess. Because they're kids in Hollywood and meth is cheap. But like, <laughs> so, but, but no, they really your, should. Your answer is River Phoenix. That's what it is. You need a lot more Jake Lloyd. Oh, like, look um, at uh, look at Twin Peaks, uh, the reboot. That's that's most of the cast from that is back, and they're twenty five years older, and they're playing themselves twenty five years old, and it's great. It's so cool. Yeah, they should do that more. I'm actually uh, so I don't know that much about it. I know I know the basics, um, but it's my very next book. I'm going to read it as soon as I finish this book about seeds. Oh, speaking of books. I finally finished an audiobook. Nice. Yeah, which is like a huge achievement for me. Our uh, previous guest, J.F. Dubois' book, A God in the Shed. I drove I drove to Minneapolis and back um, last weekend and, and fucking Milwaukee because I'm dumb. And I finished it, and it's a fucking great book. And if you're into horror, true crime, check it out. Uh, awesome. I'm surprised. I just wanted to throw that out there. But I know, like, the- reading a book is up there with, like, someone doing something normal. <laughs> I'm not good at books. Um, yeah, now I'm going to do the It audiobook read by Stephen Weber. Mike Wall says good things about it. How long is it, though? It's, uh, if I remember, 44 hours, I think. Oof. Yeah. Oof. See, you know how long that, well, I mean, granted, you both have what, uh, hour to two hour commutes? Three hour commute, yeah. Each day. Uh, and I listen to it on 2X, and I actually do, I listen to oh, it while I do my dishes and while I'm walking around and while I'm getting dressed in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that's when I find I get the most listening in. It's just like doing random shit around the house, just kind of. See, I, I've I've found that I stop paying attention, and then I miss what happened. Yeah, because I have like a very very terrible attention span. It depends on the task, like something like doing dishes, where I'm literally just scrubbing the same goddamn fucking Tupperware plate over and over and over. But uh, did you microwave that, your sponge for ninety seconds before you did uh, that? I, I sixty, but now you got me wondering if I should do ninety seconds. I thought I could have swore you said ninety in the first place, and that's why I started doing ninety. I was doing thirty, and I've been doing sixty for a while. I Just put it in there for ten minutes. Maybe I should. Maybe I'll start doing it. <laughs> 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 you have a nice little sponge puddle in your yeah. microwave. <laughs> but there won't be any bacteria. No. Um. I, I have to address a question in our chat real quick. Ashley, I don't know how brutal the new movie is supposed to be compared to the book because, A, I've never read the book, but I know that the new movie is supposed to be pretty graphic. Um, they, they are making changes. Some of the, the creatures yeah. that uh, Pennywise turns into are not the same in the movie. Uh, they they went for deep scares on this, though. This What's is not rated? Be, no. I'm fairly certain it's R. If it's not I R, I'll be shocked. Is. That was a big thing about the book is there's a lot of, and, you know, Stephen King, I really like his stories, but he always tends to kind of divert away into, you know, I think it was, I can't remember, maybe it was Simpsons or Family Guy. They had a joke where it's just like, family okay, guy. what's your new book idea? Family Guy. Yeah. 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 It's a lamp uh, monster. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. I mean, it is full of a lot of kind of, but it's kind of influenced by, if you remember from the first movie, you know, they go see uh, like monster movies from the 50s and there's like a wolf man and stuff. So they implement a lot of that stuff. But yeah, yeah, a lot more monsters that I feel like the budget, um, which I'm sure it has a, a nice meaty budget, but I don't know if they'll be able to cover that kind of stuff, which I think will be better take away some of that monster goofiness that you see when you reveal everything. And hopefully they'll just go for a little more conservative and keep the scares in line. I'm just shocked they're not doing it. Like cinematic universes are in right now. I'm really shocked they're not do, they're not tying it directly into Dark Tower, and they're not. Uh, I think they sort of are. And are they? They, they? There's definitely some hints of Pennywise in the Dark Tower trailer, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see that guy show up. Also, the guy who who's playing Pennywise in the movie is supposed to be in the new Stephen King TV series. It's based around a bunch of his stories in the town that they were all oh, okay plotted in. Uh, so right now it seems like the year of Stephen King because he's got a couple different TV series. He's got two big budget 
uh, movies that are coming out. It's nice to see that fi guy finally reaching a level of success that I don't think he's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> also, Stranger Things, very heavily uh, King uh, yep. mask. Um, in fact, one of the Stranger Things kids is in the It movie. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, Richie Tozer. Yeah, that's I'm crazy. I'm concerned though. I, I feel like Dark Tower is going to bomb so badly, it's going to kind of turn people off of the idea and from the books, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna leave a stain on the Dark Tower legacy. I hope not. I love the trailer. I think it looks great. I'm more concerned about the 90 minute running time. Well, the fact that it's a running ninety minute running time, but then they're also leading into a TV series. Yeah, yeah, uh, prequels, yeah. which is it's a very ambitious idea, and ninety minutes for a film still seems like that should be fine. It, it, we've gotten used to having these giant epic films, and I think that a lot of them just fill it with a bunch of bullshit that yeah. annoys people. I think the Hobbit movies would have been great if it was one to two films. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Three long-ass films, it was just so much filler that was unnecessary because they got a little fucking greedy and they thought, well, we can just keep capping this shit up and see what happens. Yeah, I want to say I want to say Dark Tower is different because it's eight novels, but obviously they're not adapting eight novels. They're doing, they're doing their own thing, and supposedly if they did do sequels, they would bring in more of the characters and stuff. So I don't even know what the story is going to be. I guess it could probably work in 90 minutes. I like two and a half hour movies. I, 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 I don't know. I like I, them too. You feel more epic that way. This all goes back. It, but it would be three hours of Matthew McConaughey. My, my, <laughs> so my complaint to this, and this is personal, this has nothing to do with anything other than how I ingest media, but it's, it's my attention span. Like I tried starting the Dark Tower while mowing the lawn, and at, at all of a sudden, like 10 minutes in, and I'm like, I realize I'm thinking about what I'm going to make for dinner in three days or what color underwear I'm going to wear tomorrow. And that's just me as a person, and I just it overstimulated, and it's hard to focus in on one thing. No, it is tough. I saw two movies this week by myself, Wonder Woman and Spider-Man, and um, I really cannot sit still. I just, I can't, yep. like, I just, I really just get, I'm antsy, and like, yep. I'm not checking my phone. I'm trying really hard not to check my phone. Thank God for my watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 222 um, 30 is definitely a bit of a stretch now. After so many blockbusters, I mean, we're talking the last 10 years, you know, the status quo has been like, if you're releasing a superhero movie, it must be two hours and 15 minutes at least, and I miss the days when John Carpenter was making movies at 100 minutes, you know, 115 minutes. Like, that's a perfect running time. And um, Yeah, let's hope Dark Tower... Get, I, I really hope... I like the trailer. I, let's hope it actually turns out to be really good. I don't know why they keep going to these, these fairly green directors for all these big tempo movies. Because they're sure cheap. Yeah. yeah. And they, you could probably push them around and get them to do shit the way that whoever is exactly. funding that's it wants. Exactly to why, yeah, but it's a shame because that's then that's usually why these movies aren't as good. I'm not disagreeing. Um, and you guys are the movie makers, not me. But I, I hope Dark Tower is good. I, I like the trailer. I love the uh, the source material. I'm fine with them changing things. It have you read? Have you read all the books? I audio booked all the books uh, over the uh, like that counts uh, as reading. Yeah, it was like a six month uh, thing. Uh, it's awesome. I'm totally on board. Were those also read by Tony Shalhoub from Wings as Antonio? Because you know, that's a good thing to do. I, I can't wait to read Carrie by Roy Biggins. And uh, <laughs> um, no, I also did Salem's Lot in the middle of my marathon because Salem's Lot uh, is such a big part of the second half of the Dark Tower series. So it's cool that you guys just covered Salem's Lot. Oh. Father, uh, Father Callahan is a major character in the Dark Tower series. Did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was th that was one of those things where three hours of movie, even watching it at home, having the ability to pause and stuff was too much. There's no story in Salem's Lot. There's nothing. I I, I couldn't believe like spoilers for Salem's Lot, but wow. I'm still, they're building the world. They're doing world building and they're doing all this, uh, and then uh, like like ninety percent of the book is done, and then suddenly the story finally kicks off. Oh, we got to stop this vampire, and then that's it. Well, and that's that's kind of what we talked about last week. Is uh, <clears throat> if you take yeah, out all like the, the you haven't seen okay. So yeah. if you if the movie Salem's Lot, and I'll give you the brief version because we did like you know podcast last week. But if you take out all the she's fucking his husband, he's fucking her sister, all that shit, you have like a sixty minute <laughs> movie of actual content that pertains to a vampire. <laughs> I didn't need the, the other two hours, yeah. but I get you're doing the whole. It was made for TV, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So 1977 or 79 sorry and and it it stands out and there's there's certainly a lot of things that have, have taken influence from it uh fright night is a big one 
Lost Boys uh, as well. There was something compelling about it from the visual perspective, and it was it was uh, Toby Hooper who did the uh, Texas uh, Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Yeah. yeah. It's so wait, wait, so wait, wait. So you're right. I never even thought about that. Salem's Lot was was that pretty much the first Americana um, suburban vampire, like a uh, non Dracula. Uh, That's what exactly what they were trying to avoid, and they make the Dracula in it, the vampire in it, look more like Nosferatu. Because they they felt and they didn't let him speak either. They didn't want to do anything that was akin to Dracula, which at that point in time was being made fun of in things like uh, Love at First Bite. With uh, well, back Blackula was different, but Love at First Bite <laughs> had come out around that time, which was George Harrison or George Hamilton, sorry, and and was like a ridiculous spoof. Um, who was Renfield? Uh, the, oh, the guy from Laughing. <laughs> but it was like at that point in time, we we had lost our uh, affinity for vampires as being scary because they were all romanticized. It's kind of like Twilight has done to them now. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's interesting. All right. I got to listen to that episode that you guys did last week. That we did last week. Well, let's focus on this week's episode. What's our next news item? <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> Thank you, Jack. I'm, I'm, I can't help it. I'm just a backseat producer. This no, is... I like this is why I love having you on because a lot of times and to anyone that's listening to this that has ever been on here or Mike, it, it, sometimes if you're not a host on your own, like I never want to stop a guest from a, a thought or saying something because conversation in its natural state is far better than just reading something. But having people like Jack on makes it easier to keep the show moving along because they know what it's like to have a fucking guest that goes rogue and won't ever <laughs> stop talking. Also, well, I was just on the show two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. That's why we set the timer on 90th percentile. It, uh, keeps it going. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been podcasting with Dan for three years, so I've, I've learned how to uh, just uh, hit the gas sometimes. Yeah. Also, so, you guys do a show that's timed. Yeah. yeah. Where were you when you just talked about starting the timer? Fucking this guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, that was, that was important because we knew, especially with the, uh, the 90th percentile is meant to be, let's talk about whatever we feel like. Let's just do this. This part of the show is, is like our favorite part of the show. So that's why we like 90s percentile was supposed to be just that. Uh, and we knew, oh my God, that's dangerous because we could go on for hours. We could just talk about shit for hours. So that we had to set the time for, for that format to work, for that premise to work. That's true. And, and it works out. And especially with, because I don't like editing and I know you edit we heavily, but mm -hmm. I hate doing it. And I don't blame you one bit for it. That having the timer on 90s just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, it sure, sure does. But the next news story, there's um, a creepy internet game happening. And uh, Dread Central needed help, and, uh, and since since Corey has put this in the show doc, it, someone's fucking finished the game, which is insane. But it was um, it was weird. People found QR codes at Comic Con. You scan it, and it took you to this website that was mindgames.xyz. But there was three Gs. It's supposed to be six 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 because people think Satan's cool. Um, and I mean, it basically, he gets a lot of work. Old smoky legs. He's they basically popular. said if you get to the end of the game, elected president in the United States or something. He's a solid fan. Yeah, he, he already did. Yeah, we already have Satan as a president. Um, Jack, Jack, if you want to call him a cunt, you can do that here too. Uh, I don't want to overplay my my uh, my hand, but uh, yeah, no, I, I I hope he just has the most slowest painful death. Uh, imagine. <laughs> Quick and, sidebar. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have an echo in our kitchen, as nice. do the majority of the the, the world. <clears throat> but my wife said something and she goes, Oh shit, they're probably like they're on to me now. And I was like, Don't worry. My old pal Jack Pacone calls Trump a cunt ten to fifteen times per podcast and he's not arrested yet. But so... the difference is, is people are listening to your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not worried. That's why I'm not worried. <laughs> uh, actually Dan oh, brought out that boy. same exact point. Uh, I I don't know what gets cut and what doesn't. Uh, but I really laid into Trump. It might even be on a 90s percentile that hasn't aired yet. Uh, but I think it was actually on the worst episode ever that hasn't aired yet. And I think I'm going to cut it for deleted scenes. But I really like, uh, I, 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 you know, I call for his death in, in, uh, in but like not, not by uh, humans because that's illegal. I'm mm -hmm. just saying I hope he gets cancer because uh, you, can't, that... you can't arrest me for hoping somebody gets cancer. And, and <clears throat> no, needs to have health care, you know. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, but Dan was worried that because Amazon is uh, listening, that th they could get me for that. Well, Fair he's already enough. fired Bezos, so it's probably. Fine. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I totally forgot to send out a link so our our listeners could find could watch uh, this live. That's fine. 
Um, trying to find it right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, I start. This was my fault that we started late. I couldn't find my pants before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and was, so there's there was this internet game. People went to this website, and you basically had to solve clues. Um, and then it was kind of interesting. I don't know. I didn't get to watch any of the. There's videos and and web pages, and you basically find a. a a clue and then you append it to the the url that they have and then that's how it kind of you get from page to page huh. and um has, has see, it there's... been figured out what who started it or what it's for i would assume well the final I, I so there, a movie here there's 37 total links and the final one is the, the url is directed by victor matthew i think that's how you say his name um and let me get there you get there because there's a message that you guys have a link to, to, to i can't find it to youtube to this th Ooh. this very recording Some right now fucking creepy right. music going on uh essentially it says congratulations you reached the end of the maze claim your prize by sending an email to this email uh say first name last name and say you want to be interviewed for the monster project um and it's it it basically it's a big uh pr stunt for a movie huh they usually are yeah, which is, is exactly what I expected. Um, such is life. But uh, very recording. Right some now. Fucking creepy music going on. Uh, <sighs> you gotta mute that shit, Jack. I'm not playing anything. Oh, wasn't me. I blame Mike. Mike, was it you? What? <laughs> I don't know. No, absolutely not. I right, was telling Mike. So yeah, that game happened. It was um, first some movie that's coming out in August. Um, the game that we were talking about earlier, for people who don't know, Player Unknown's uh, uh, Battlegrounds. Uh, I read, I found out, uh, found out about that game from AV Club, and it's a first-person shooter. But they they summed it up pretty well. It's actually a survival horror game. It's basically Hunger Games, where there's a hundred players yep. and the giant giant map. It's first-person shooter, and you all are in an airplane going over the island, and you pick where you want to jump out and parachute, and you have no gear, none, none, nobody has gear, and then you land. And then you all scramble for loot and just try to start shooting each other. You know, you, you look for guns and scopes and armor and stuff. Uh, and apparently it's really more about like hiding in closets, not getting seen and waiting for the right moment to stray. It was compared to uh, Alien Isolation. Uh, so uh, your horror fan listeners might actually appreciate that game. Well, when we, uh, our friends over at Ink Geek studios uh play it quite a bit on twitch so if you're not sure just go on twitch and watch it but it, it's, it's a fun turning game. me into a twitch convert i've been watching it for hours i never really thought of it as a horror or survival horror game but i guess it is i just it was more of a survival game right 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 um last Surviv news story surviving is horror that's true yeah. um guillermo del toro and patron are making tequila <laughs> i think tequila is disgusting but the packaging is pretty fucking tits so i may pick some up the packaging is really good on this, and uh, it's a good idea if you're watching some Guillermo del Toro stuff. It, it be drunk as possible. That's What's true. it going to be called? Pacific Rim of Salt. <laughs> uh, 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 Jack, you're done. I'm muting you. Pan's Lab Bat Absinth. Lab Synth. <laughs> oh, oh, um, Patron. Mimic, Guillermo del but Toro. tequila. That one it's, wasn't as good. It's deeply aged and blended. Oh. Just like me. Yeah, it's just called Patron Tequila X Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> Everybody, I guess he saw George Clooney make a billion dollars selling his tequila, so he thought, why not me? Uh, no, that's true. I mean, there's there's money in liquor, so um, yeah, fucking whatever. But yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> are you uh, prepared for the cost? I don't drink tequila. Well, it's still, it's four hundred and seventy-five dollars a bottle, and you can pre-order it through Reserve Bar. Isn't that on par with some of the beers that you've purchased, though? No, I've never spent more than a hundred dollars on a bottle. I have, mm, I've never spent more than forty dollars on a bottle. Yeah, so I have sold beer for over two hundred dollars. If you compare what a regular beer costs to a regular bottle of tequila, the the cost. Of, but you um, can you can get a bottle of tequila for the same cost that I purchase for a bottle of beer say twenty dollars right but most people don't buy beer for twenty dollars that's, no, that's, that's my that's point true. if you're going yeah. off of average tequila and average beer cost per fluid ounce 
it should be comparable that four hundred seventy five dollars you spending a hundred dollars on a bottle of beer to to get the equivalent in tequila it's it's right up there. But but here's here's my thing is uh, you just want to drink your beer. No, shut up. Uh, <laughs> okay, cost versus is four hundred seventy five dollars worth it? Or are you paying four hundred seventy five dollars because it's Guillermo Guillermo del Toro? It I, I would say, say it's the name. It, it's it's certainly the name. If you are a That's fan, the then it's it's cool. But the like, other I, part is the packaging. <clears throat> the packaging it comes with two candles. It's like a Day of the Dead sort of design. It's something that you're going to have up on your mantle if you're that sort of collector. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to sell it. it. It's not him himself. If it was something like Guillermo del Toro designed a bottle and it looks like something straight out of one of his his movies, the creatures, that would be enough to to increase the cost quite a bit. This is, frankly, it's a work of art. That you can drink and get shit faced out. Well, that's true. There was it. um, I was out in Minnesota and there was a uh, a bottle of Hennessy and it was purple, like the liquid is purple. And I asked the chick why it was purple. And long story short, she didn't tell me why Hennessy was purple, but it comes in this big box with um, <clears throat> like the old school 3D glasses, but it's just three big color panes. Mm -hmm. And depending on what color you're looking through at the packaging, is what picture will stand out at you. It was like sixty bucks a box and. Had she told me why the Hennessy was purple, I likely would have purchased it because <laughs> I never drank Hennessy. She's a salesperson who sucks. Horrendously, she made a comment about me spending thirty dollars on like four bottles of beer, <laughs> and I'm like, "This is your fucking job. Shut up and take my money." <sighs> All right, All right, guys. I uh, I give up. I can't find the link to this uh, video. I uh, put it in the the chat here. I the chat here. We yeah, chat. that's why I was. I didn't even know you're still looking. Oh, thank you, Corey. You're welcome. Uh, next news item. That's, That's the it. last one. We're talking about a movie now. Oh, awesome. Put it in the, the chat here. The chat here. We have yeah, chat. that's why I, was, I didn't even know you were still looking. Oh, thank you, Corey. <laughs> that was my that, that time. That was me. That, that was I gathered. You. That was me that time. I got really confused. I got I super confused. See, at I least before you. when I fucked up, I was trying to figure out how it works. Jack, you're a seasoned veteran here. Uh, no, we don't. He has two fucking to... podcasts. If you haven't heard, <laughs> yeah, but they don't live stream it like a dog. No, we can't. We cannot right. figure out YouTube. It's pretty we easy. You just figure click out the live a couple stream. buttons. Well, you when mean... you mentioned you heard something like the other side, I was trying to think like, wait a minute, I'm wearing headphones. How does that happen? But uh, <laughs> so then I panicked and just closed all my windows. And all, <laughs> 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 all of a sudden, Mike was gone for the podcast. I just spilled a quart cup of coffee all over my key. <laughs> he had a good run. Um, let's go ahead and get into Jaws. That's our movie this week. If you weren't paying any attention when I never said it before, funny that you picked this, Jack. This week is Shark Week. Oh, what a happy coincidence! Um, yeah. I picked it because um, it's the perfect summer movie. I thought this is a you know we're right smack in the middle of the summer, uh, and uh, nothing. I I really do feel like if you made a list of top five summer movies, uh, this would be one of them. Creation you know, of maybe, the summer maybe one months. crazy summer would also be up there. Uh, I don't know what else. One crazy summer should definitely be up there. <laughs> um, but it just it's it's you know it just I think I I didn't realize even though that this was like the twentieth time I watched the movie or whatever, uh, I never realized it took place uh, in Massachusetts. I always pictured it, I always thought it was the Jersey Shore for some reason, uh, but I realized it was uh, it was Massachusetts this time around. Uh, but it reminds me of like you know I every summer I would go to the Jersey Shore. It was just uh, go to the beach. Is it Massachusetts? I thought it was Long Island. Is it Long Island? Oh, so they maybe I'm wrong. They shot it at Martha, but it's Amity Amityville, right? Which is or no, sorry, Amity, Amity. which is Amity. a um, uh, false town. I mean, so it's like a North Coast uh, Long Island thing. I mean, they say what it's that whole speech about, uh, or not a speech. One They're line. making fun of New England accents, and then there's a part where he says, "We've got fishermen coming from Rhode Island, Connecticut." Uh, and uh, I forget what the other state was, but they didn't say Massachusetts. That's why I assumed it was Massachusetts. I guess I, yeah, I guess now that I think about it, I never heard any distinct New York references. So, yeah, could be. It was shot in Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. Right. And we seem to have lost Matt. So we better halt because he's the one to record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right. Long Island, New York. I'm an asshole. Oh, boy. I'm getting hungry. 
my wife has made meatloaf twice this week because I got a bunch of hamburger and I made it into patties. So I had hamburgers going into the first meatloaf. And then the day that I finished off the that one, uh, she came home and she's like, I'm making another meatloaf. And I'm just like, I'm never going to poop. I'm never, <laughs> ever going to poop. I love meatloaf so much. I haven't had it. I never have it anymore because I, I don't know how to make it. My uh, my mother used to make it in cupcake tins. So she, Yeah. And then she would freeze them. And then I would just come home late from work and I would like take one out and just pop it in the microwave. It was awesome. I was going to say, I don't think, uh, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever had meat milk in my life. It was just one of those things that neither of my parents ever cooked. And I mean, I probably had it like at school. I remember it was part of the school lunch, but it always kind of. There's a deli around the corner from us at work. Uh, we got to go get it sometime. It's pretty good. All right. Yeah. She makes it in our Instapot. Uh, nice. So it's, it's a, basically, it's a pressure cooker that it does an excellent job. And she's not a big fan of meatloaf normally either. But when she made it the first time, she's like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I think she'd always just had some version that she didn't enjoy. And it, yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's essentially um, just ground beef and breadcrumbs and seasoning. spices, right? Yeah. 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 We use uh, Italian flavored panko breadcrumbs and, and just whatever else she puts in there. And it it's amazing. Just yeah, uh, it's, it's so good. It's so good. I'm, oh, now I'm craving it so much. Oh, man. Um, yeah, no, we definitely have to try it. We have to get some. I was telling Corey and Matt before you uh, before you showed up that I, I was out trying to find a place to kayak uh, today, and I was on my way back, and I stopped at Burger King, and I have to stop at Burger King or McDonald's in my car and then eat in the parking lot so that my wife doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Did she? She's not home, is she? But well, she's upset when when I was about to start recording, I was just like, "You gotta go upstairs." She was watching Friends in the room over here. I was like, you gotta go upstairs, and I can't have this. I can't have you playing anything. So now she's upstairs watching the Iron Giant on DVD. Yeah, try having that conversation with her twice a week, like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't be good. She's already taking taken my big TV. Like since the day I bought the big TV for our viewing pleasure, she just watches uh, Friends and. Frasier and shit like that. <laughs> That's I, what I do. I have to beg to sit down and watch like, uh, you know, can we watch Rogue One today? Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome back, Matt. Welcome back, Mac. Did I miss anything? We talked about Meatloaf. Stopped, for... meatloaf. <laughs> I fucking love Meatloaf too. <laughs> <laughs> I really am craving some now. Now I really want, oh, I, I'm so broke. I really cannot spend another dollar, but I kind of want to order someone. See most All right. Jack, you come over and mow my lawn. I'll give you beer and meatloaf. I know, but I need immediate gratification. I don't do long-term goals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Uh, so let's get let's start with Just. So I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know what didn't get recorded and what didn't. Uh, just well, now. now the entire recording is out the window, so I'm going to be forced to <laughs> strip the oh, audio yeah. from the YouTube video. And um, I have the audio too. It. I need it. Uh, oh, that's up to you. Well, it's up to you. I'm either, I'm either getting it from you or I'm pulling it out of the YouTube video. All right, I can. I mean, I can send you the files if it's easier. It, uh, it depends on what you 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 probably won't sound that that well though. I'm only recording you guys off of my speakers, um, but I'll send it to you if you need it. Um, no, so let's talk Jaws, right? Or do we have to do all the news bits again? No, 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 no. <laughs> like I said, in worst case, I'll just download the YouTube video to audio and then just cut it apart. Okay, so. Jaws, I just said uh, before our little technical snafu that uh, I j never realized that it took place in Massachusetts. Uh, I was wrong. It takes place in Long Island. Mike was right. Uh, so I didn't I didn't realize it also took place in Long Island. I don't consider that beach country, but I guess it is. I is guess I didn't really think uh, any of that because... Well, that's the Long Island care. Sound, the north coast of Long Island, which is like, it's not open water. It's a very, very big bay, but I don't consider, like, you can see Connecticut from the other side. I've gone a couple of times. It's nice, but I don't know. If you see land on the other side, I don't consider it the beach. I live by a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> which is full of sharks. Which is full of sharks. Yeah, you've got, you've never gone to the really beach bad ever? because of all the corn. What was that, Jack? Have you ever gone to the beach ever? Yeah, I used to live on Lake Michigan. No, but like a like the real beach. A real beach? No, I'm not a beach ocean. type. I'm not like I'm not. Uh, I'm per se someone you don't want to see without a shirt on. <laughs> that's not what that's the, the the beach is about going and uh, and hearing the waves and literally all your troubles just floating into the ether. You know where else okay, I can do that? Yeah, man, boobs. It's okay. I don't really have boobs. Just call them <laughs> flotation devices. <laughs> didn't stop Chris Christie. No, <laughs> there you go. 
Um, um, I've never been to a beach on the ocean because apparently you Lake Michigan beaches don't count. Uh, lake Michigan's a very big lake, so I'm sure it's a nice It really place. is, but the, but the lake is always super cold, so no one swims in it ever. My point being is I am not a beach person. Going to the beach, like going to Mexico is not, it doesn't interest me. Like I want to go to Ireland where it's dark and dreary and fucking wet and shitty. So and you're, you're Sheriff Brody. You're the Sheriff Brody in our, yep. in our group here. Um, no, and then, so the reason I picked Jaws is because it is a perfect summer movie. It also uh, is. I feel like you're hosting this podcast now. That's fine. Good, let him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. It's, All right. Uh, Jack, I mean, call your new host. You can talk about your, your man boobs again, uh, for another 20 minutes if you want. You want me to whip them out? <laughs> but look, I'd like to see a boob, please. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Nice. Is. Nice. That that wasn't the one I wanted to say. I'm sorry. Oh, all right. This is one. Thank you. There we go. The, the Where's <laughs> Waldo of nipples is. Like, <laughs> I was seriously. gonna say, is that uh, is that a nipple or is that Poochie's face? <sighs> it's Poochie's. No, Matt's butthole. actually. <laughs> Matt's planning to break his brother out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the plan. Um, the trick no. is Matt would not break his brother out. <laughs> Exactly. I wasn't going to say it. I'm glad Corey said it. <laughs> but I want to mention why uh, I uh, specific. I like. Uh, I know you guys were going to try to get Mike on the show at some point, but why I asked him to join me uh, for this one is because uh, he's a big Spielberg guy uh, and he's a big Jaws guy. So I figured he would actually know more about the movie than me. Although then I found out a couple of days ago that he's only seen Close Encounters once. So I don't know how much of a good Spielberg guy he is. It's close, encounters. close encounters is coming back out in the theaters pretty soon. Yeah, I, I really want to see it. Uh, it's one, it's really such an impre- it's one of my favorite movies. What, is it is it playing for several shows or is it like a one night only thing? I think or it's one night only. Really, four K. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because we were watching uh, the making of Jaws with my wife the other night, and she had mentioned something about Close Encounters because they mentioned Close Encounters, I think, and uh, she was saying that she'd never seen it, and then I brought up our conversation and. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to I check it again, good. but as I was telling Jack, um, we had talked about it, and I remember at the time that I saw it, I think I was about 18, and I don't know why this decision burned me in the way that it did, but if, spoilers for Close Encounter, um, Richard Dreyfuss' character basically just uh, dumps his whole family to go on this uh, on this spaceship and meet these isn't, aliens. Isn't and, that the dream? I think, well, and you <laughs> know, dumping family thing. for a spaceship? I think I was just, and also, you know, with Spielberg's sentimentality, I couldn't imagine him making that choice to do that as a filmmaker, um, which I guess uh, he has gone back and said if he had children, he would have never done that decision. But, um, yeah, I'm sure now, being a little older, a little more jaded, I would probably watch it and say, like, yeah, his kid's a pain in the ass, his wife sucks, I would totally get on a plane. But, uh, (laughs) yeah, I'd like to check it again uh, with some new eyes and a little more uh, grit from the world on me. Yeah, and Close Encounters was his follow-up to Jaws, I think, and it was where they gave him a much bigger budget, and that was because uh, he basically became the super famous director we know pretty much right out of the gate. This was Jaws was his second or third film, and I think it's it and Star Wars uh, are considered pretty much the the first summer blockbuster that started. The, there wasn't like a summer movie season until until Jaws. Yeah, so it is the perfect summer movie in two respects. And I saw a couple couple numerical facts here. I saw that Jaws uh, was the first movie to make over $100 million at the box office, beating out um, several movies, Exorcist, The Sting, Gone with the Wind. Um, but uh, the biggest one before that was The Godfather at $85 million. So Jaws, <laughs> I mean, $15 million back in 75, you know, that's a huge intake. Um, so, yeah, yeah, and then it got beat by E.T., and then E.T. got beat by Jurassic Park. Yeah, so, so Spielberg is uh, uh, rolling in the green. Yeah. Do you think he listens to Limp Bizkit's Rolling while counting his money? I think that's the only song he's ever listened to ever. I think he never <laughs> heard any music until he was 55 <laughs> years old. And then he heard Rolling, and now he just plays that on an infinite loop. I don't blame him. Limp Bizkit is the height of music. Like, it doesn't <laughs> get any better than Limp Bizkit. No, I think what you mean is you have to be high to listen to <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, so no, I'm, no, Limp Bizkit's great all the time. So I'm curious. Uh, I imagine Corey has seen Jaws a number of times. Uh, I'm Matt. No, you, ac- you are completely. Actually, I I have only seen it once before, and that was for a podcast I did a couple years ago uh, with Glenn Rubenstein, who was on here a couple months back. He forced uh, Gregor and I from Elsnerds to do it. That was the precursor show to Elsnerds, actually. Yeah. Um, 
I had never wanted to see it because I think I saw the opening of it on TV on ABC or something one day. And the the woman at the beginning who's basically getting dragged around the water, that freaked me out so bad. I'm like, nope, fuck that. Wow. Uh, really? One, never swimming again. And two, it's like, just, I'm not, it, I know I seem like a guy who enjoys watching people uh, get eaten <laughs> alive, but you it's, have it's kind of on my quirks. Yeah. No, not really. It's not not my thing. Um, no, so that's funny because it is considered one of the scariest movies. Uh, it was considered a really scary, like a horror movie. Uh, and you know, uh, people wouldn't go to the beach, wouldn't go in the water after the movie came out, and it was really, it really freaked people out. And I don't know. I guess I, I don't remember watching it for the first time. It was just always there. Like I, I know I was watching it as a, at a very, very young age. And I never found it. I never watched it as a scary movie. It was always just, I don't want to call it an action movie, but it was just a movie. I just, you know, the, the jump scares with the shark. And I it never, I just never saw it as that kind of genre. I don't know why. I did have a really freaky recurring nightmare as a toddler. Uh, I, probably the only recurring nightmare I've ever had, maybe. Uh, and it was, it's the very first dream, the earliest dream I could ever remember. And it was basically, I was on a fishing boat and the shark came out and, and tried to eat me. Uh, and um, a lot of other details I won't go into, but it, so I guess it did leave some impression. But I, I really never saw it as a quote unquote scary movie. Yeah, I think it's mo a lot more of just a good movie with several scary parts. You know, there's yeah. a couple pieces inserted in there. It's even though I know it's classically called a horror movie, I don't think of it as a horror. Movie. Most of it takes place during the daytime, which is very um, the opposite different. of horror. Yeah, and. Um, I don't know, but that being said, I mean, I watched this movie a lot when I was a kid, and especially the sequels, Jaws 2 in particular, which has a little bit more, uh, like, I, I remember when I was a little kid, the scariest thing that I could have ever see was, like, a monster eating a person, like, the thought of being devoured, like, if anyone has ever seen King Kong Lives, which is a really, really bad <laughs> movie from the early 80s, uh, there's a scene where, like, uh, a bunch of construction workers or something, or hunters have have King Kong kind of tied up and they're like throwing rocks at his head or whatever and he breaks free and he just picks two guys up one of them he rips in half and the other one he just goes like oh you know like Homer <laughs> Kong and uh, just stuff like that always freaked me out and uh, so there's a lot of that in Jaws too and uh, but I also remember you know we had a swimming pool when I was growing up and uh, I remember if I was swimming at night and staring into the deep end and I'm a really good swimmer but I was always like even my imagination would just play with me, you know. And uh, you want to rub that in my face a little more that you're a really good swimmer. Because I can't swim. I feel <laughs> I like can't Jack told you. I'm not swim either. So. Yeah, I'm fucking terrible at it. You're in good company. Oh wow! Yeah. I grew up swimming. At, I, but at the at a pool in the YMCA, it was right. like every week my school or I went to day camp with the YMCA, and so I swam all the time as a kid. Uh, and but that's why I will swim in a pool. I don't like to swim in fresh water or the ocean. Yeah. at all. You have that vulnerability of not being able to see your feet. Yep. And you never know what's going to come up and just nip at you, you know. It's exactly. Like, I am lucky. Yeah, that's why I don't like going in lakes. I I've, I don't I don't know if I've ever gone. I've only once or twice maybe actually gone into a lake. I, I the water at least really up close at the shore in the ocean. I, I you don't really see that much fish. I, I would freak out if I was if I actually saw it. like you know harmless guppies or whatever. I still ugh, ugh, just them swimming. Just the idea around. that something would nibble at your toe like it's bait. Yeah, yeah. no, thank you. I mean, the crabs will get you uh, on the shore definitely. But. Yeah. And if you do feel that little nibble, you no matter who you are, you will uh, kick and thrash. Like as hard as you possibly can, you will. I will scream like a little girl lost in the woods. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Matt, what's your history with Jaws? This is the first time I've seen it start to finish. Yeah, I figured you fucking idiot. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I I will admit that I watched Jaws wow. three, wow, quite a few times as, as, a, as yeah. a teenager. Stud. Uh, something about the the water park aspect of it. I, I don't know. It just that was a little different for me. That one I could handle. Uh, um, because they humanized the shark a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jaws 3 I've only seen maybe once, never even start to finish. Um, Jaws 2 I've only caught a couple of times on TV. Jaws 4 is probably the one I saw the most. That was always on TV. The Revenge, all Michael Caine. Yeah. All I know about Jaws 4 is it's the movie that Richard Jenny just tore to <laughs> shit in one of his live acts where he's like, yeah, so if you want to get to Hawaii, if you want to do travel, what's the fastest way? Fucking shark! You, you, you're a shark when you swim because it's faster than a goddamn airplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the shark beats them there to the Bahamas. Uh, I could talk about Jaws four all day. Maybe in a, in a future 
uh, P.O.T. I'm actually yeah. really impressed that you didn't choose a sequel to a horror movie. This is the I first know, time you've I, chosen I like the original. Sequels. Yeah. I, is this our first original? No. Oh, Levi- never mind. You did Leviathan. There is yeah. no sequels to that, but I try um, and forget that day. <laughs> did you like this? Or, was this? or is this another Leviathan for you? So, <clears throat> um, it, it wasn't a Leviathan, but it wasn't like, oh, this movie's fucking great. Point being is... I could see in the 70s this movie being very, very good and very, very scary. To me, at this point, seeing it for the first time in 2017, having watched now over 100 movies for this podcast, <clears throat> it wasn't like that terrifying. It was just kind of cheesy, but I still see how it was good. Um, I, I kind of, my the way I looked at it was it's like Strange Land for me, how I love it. And Corey thought it was kind of shitty. But had I saw Jaws when I was a kid and I watched it again now, it would have been much like I remember how cool it was to see it then. Whereas yeah. Strange Land's fucking cool to see then. It's it's really not a great movie, but it just reminds me of being younger and like the beginning of getting into horror. So I can really see why people think it's or I shouldn't say why people think. Why it's it's revered as such a great movie and such a great horror movie and a cornerstone of modern horror. I mean, it does. It does suffer from the fact that uh, there's been generations of imitators that mm-hmm. make it l- seemingly in I, retrospect less original. But so I was telling, I was telling Mike before you got here, if we can pull up the side. When I was looking for my pants. Yeah, when you're looking for your pants. So it is. It is currently um, Shark Week, and my and I found out because my wife turned on Sling and went to Sci-Fi, and there was um, Robo Sharktopus versus Asian <laughs> Hooker. You know, uh, Jaws Seven, and it's literally movie. fucking all day is shitty shark horror movies. Sharknado versus Croctopus Twelve. Um, <laughs> so, so to to your point is yes, Jaws was the originator of all of. Without Jaws, I bet Sharknado would never been a thing. And there's five fucking Sharknado movies. There's more Sharknados than there are Jaws movies, which is <laughs> yeah. itself kind of a sad statement about the world. All the Jaws movies are available on Encore, I think, this month. Uh, yeah, it's Encore Stars, one of them. So I, I went and I found the movie, and then I realized, oh, shit, I could just watch this through on demand. And then they were playing all four of them over the weekend anyways. Oh, that's awesome. So it just, it, yeah, this, it's certainly, I think you're right. It's it's a perfect summer movie, and, and people expect that. But it's also, yeah, it's, it's Shark Week. But I um, so- well, I just want to say uh, the legacy is one thing. The fact that it has spawned an entire movie genre and it spawned uh, horror as blockbuster popcorn and entertainment is all one thing. But just in terms, if you take all of that out and you just look at it in a vacuum, it is just such a superbly crafted film. It is Spielberg at maybe not his height, but close. It's such, it's like every shot, uh, you know, this is getting film school nerd here. Every shot is, there's so many brilliant shots in there. Yeah, it's film um, school in two hours, basically. I mean, well, yeah. that's that's why I like having you on. It has one of the it has one of the greatest one shot one takes all time. So there's a very shout out to every frame of painting, which is this really cool YouTube series that I'm, I I really appreciate, uh, done by an editor named uh, I forget. Um, but uh, it he does a he does these really cool uh, like eight to nine minute videos about certain filmmaking techniques, and he talks about how Spielberg does these one takes. And he's not famous for them. You know, Scorsese's famous for this, that one shot in Goodfellas where they walk through the club. Um, uh, what's the guy did Children of Men and Gravi- Gravity? He's famous for doing them. Oh, wow. Joss Whedon is famous for doing them. Uh, Spielberg does them, but he hides them so that you don't even notice you're doing it. And that's actually better because it's less showy. It, does, it takes you, doesn't take you out of the movie. It immerses you more into it because it almost feels like you're watching a play. And there's like four or five of these awesome shots in Jaws. But the best is when they're on the ferry and they're going across the water and he's arguing with the mayor. And the camera doesn't even move. It's on a tripod. And it's just face it. Like they, they just let the camera run. But uh, the actors keep coming in and out of frame, and they're on a ferry boat that's turning, so the background is completely changed. It, it, it looks like 35 different shots, and the camera doesn't move once for two minutes. It's awesome. Yeah, it's all about blocking instead of editing. It's uh, an older, older style of filmmaking, which is pretty much lost these days in current filmmaking. Uh, Tony Zhao is uh, the yes, that was it. guy. I just wanted to like, 
Uh, that was exactly yeah. what I was going to say, but I didn't want, I didn't want to like have it be a slightly different Italian first name and slightly different Asian last name. And me <laughs> I didn't want to be like, Oh yeah, it was like, uh, it was like Johnny Chow. You know, Ricky right? Chow. <laughs> um, I do want to point out that this week on sci-fi literally starting today, the day we're recording this, which is July 30th Sunday. Um, they have, it's called Sharknado week. So tonight is five headed shark attack tomorrow night, Mississippi river sharks, um august 2nd trailer park shark <laughs> august 3rd toxic shark august 5th empire of the sharks uh all coming to a head with the brand new august 6th release sharknado 5 global swarming <laughs> i've never seen a single sharknado film me neither we should probably um, do that in the future I do love deep blue sea that's like the 90s version of jaws and it is it's schlock but it's very well done schlock it's yeah, deep blue sea is awesome they're yeah. doing a sequel really they, they, we did it as a news story a couple weeks ago is that there's going to be a sequel of Deep Blue Are they going to bring Tom Jane and LL Cool J back? <laughs> I, I can't imagine that you do it any other way, and it seems like <laughs> both those guys would take the paychecks. Oh, yeah. Did uh, um, Michael Rappaport survive that movie? I can't even no, remember. No, spoilers, uh, he dies. Oh, okay. Uh, so oh. does Stellan Skarsgård. And, Two feet, uh, give or take a centimeter. <laughs> <laughs> all right we need we need some somebody to cast for this uh phd oceanographer marine biologist uh, uh daredevil uh, deep dive deep scuba diver who should we get oh yeah yeah let's get that guy who sounds like he got hit on the head as a baby yeah. <laughs> let's get let's get michael rapaport think, uh, former barback michael rapaport <laughs> <laughs> So if uh, I'm going to choose a shark movie that is just the ultimate of how the fuck does this even happen? Have you guys heard of the movie called Bait? With uh, Jamie Foxx and, and the, directed by Anton Fuqua? Uh, I don't think so. This is from 2012. It's a nah. freak tsunami traps shoppers at a coastal Australian supermarket inside the building along with a 12 foot great uh, along with 12 foot great white shark. So it's a bunch of sharks in a supermarket. That's a cool premise. I got to it, it's one of those things that I, I can't believe it exists and I can't believe that I haven't watched yet. It's got to go on the list. It would basically be like Tremors where they're all hiding on top of the uh, the shelves or on the roof, I guess. Or... I'm actually oh, looking at the production still, or no, I guess it's actually screen grabs on uh, IMDb right now and it looks exactly like the supermarket from Tremors. <laughs> they're flooded with water and sharks underneath it. That's kind of awesome. Another thing we have in the dock of like movies that we could potentially do at some point on the show was uh, Shark Exorcist. <laughs> do kind of want to watch that one yet? That sounds incredible, actually. Is yeah, the shark is. possessed or is the shark the priest? Like, is the shark doing the exorcism? <laughs> <laughs> you get possessed by a shark. Yeah. Call the shark in, a, in a priest collar, like standing over a bed, just kind of. <laughs> the, the land shark standing. The, so it's like two great SNL sticks mixed together. It's it's the Exorcist one with Richard Pryor and the land shark one. <laughs> Let's make Ding that on. Who's there? Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the the movie poster for Shark Exorcist I think is my favorite. It's, it's just like the Satan shark popping out of the water and a priest just holding a cross. That's such a brilliant idea. God but the tagline, you. Satan has jaws. Hey. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't make that sound, Jack. You know it's good. <laughs> Running time of an hour and 20 minutes. So, Dark you know, Tower line. Straight into the point. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's, it's the next Dark Tower. <laughs> it came out two years ago. <laughs> Holy shit. Customers who viewed Shark Exorcist also viewed shark and ass women's prison massacre <laughs> I don't know shark hands, is it shark kansas or is it supposed to be shark and saw <laughs> shark and saw shark and saw should be the name of like a like a, a yeah. blue, bluegrass metal band <gasps> and all in marine gear and stuff <laughs> shark and saw is, a, is the probably the greatest word i've ever heard in my life <laughs> i think it's supposed to be shark and saw but yeah shark and saw Okay. Um, so, so in right. this movie, one of the things that that rings in my ear because I hadn't seen it until later was how much Kevin Smith stuff has has come from oh, Jaws. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously, there's the famous lines in in Mallrats where he's talking about how he, he was going to propose uh, at the on the ride when Jaws pops right out of the water, um, and and that part, yeah. But the other part was when 
Hooper and Quint were comparing scars. And that was right out of Chasing Amy. And I realized, oh, shit, you know, that whole scene, that's yeah. another thing where Smith is stealing from his favorite directors. And and that kind of stuff just kind of like, there was also Quint's line of um, to swim in with bow-legged women. And I'd swear I heard that uses a toast in some more modern movie hmm. later on, but I couldn't find it anywhere. But it, it's just those kind of things stick out to me. And it's like, yeah, again, this is it makes sense that everybody's going to reference this film. It's like every fucking movie has some asshole quoting Scarface in it. And I don't give a shit about Scarface, but it seems like it's hit the zeitgeist so much that everybody has to quote Scarface and everything. Yeah. And Clerks has uh, Clerks has a close up of him eating salsa and he uses the tortilla chip as a shark fin. Uh, yep. Also, the character Brody. Uh, that Jason Lee plays and Mall Rats is named after uh, Brody. Uh, and I think there's a Brody, there's a few Brodies uh, and Hoopers in other Kevin Smith scripts. And if you read uh, his spec Superman script that almost got made with Nick Cage, uh, there was a kid named Brody in it too. Yeah, that makes sense. He's a big, big Jaws fan, big Jaws, big Star Wars fan. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, he's such a, such a cool movie buff. It's a shame. He just, I just can't watch him. He's just such a big douche. And just Why so isn't he copying 1941? Because that's Spielberg. At his best. <laughs> they need to remake that for our times. Yeah, they do. 1981. Um, <laughs> at, at what point do you stop being a movie buff and you just kind of become like a dick writer? You're just regurgitating other people's good stuff. That too. That's probably that, a better way to Ask Ready Player One because that's essentially. <laughs> I fucking, fucking love that book and I'm excited I, for that movie. You shut your fucking I'm not sucker. shitting on it. I'm just saying that that's where we're at right now is the fact that Ready Player One was a book that was completely built around nostalgia and yeah. off of the, the hard work of all these things that came before it. So it's just shorthand to all these things that bring it out of your heart. Like, oh, yeah, I remember this and I love this thing. And, and so then you see it up on the screen. It's like, yeah, I get to see the Iron Giant on the screen again. That's great, but it's not the Iron Giant. Yeah, it needs it, it needs a good story because um, I you it is something new. Ready Player One is something original in the fact that it's about nostalgia. And obviously, I host a '90s podcast, and uh, at, some, at some point, I realized ninety percent of my writing, my prose, and my screenplays all had this heavy nostalgic theme that I, it wasn't even apparent to me. I was subconscious. So he he is saying something about nostalgia. Uh, right. That said, I don't think it's a very good book, and the story is really shitty. But uh, but I am but it's really great wow. world building, and I and the the theme of nostalgia is really cool. So the, the you know it's it's like there's some really good things about it, and I'm hoping the movie is is good. Spielberg is directing it. It's you, you know, know I he hate that, Jaws. I hate that Jack kind of made me realize that it's not the greatest story, but the nostalgia is what <laughs> made me really like it. Rip you! You don't get don't give him shit for ripping off of uh, Rush and uh, and no uh, no no, games no. And Star Wars because that it doesn't have anything to do with the story. It could those are just placeholders. Give him shit for ripping off of every shitty three act Robert McKee screenplay book. Uh, like it, it really <laughs> yeah. is just the oh, yeah. Oh, it's oh. screenplay by the numbers. Yeah, and it's very <laughs> and you know Jack kind of warned me. We were talking about Ready Player One, and it took me a while to read it, and I just finished it about a month ago, and. Um, it's very young adult. I mean, without take mm -hmm. the references away, and it's very much a young adult novel. And uh, that was oh yeah, it's, it's disappointing. That being said, I saw the trailer, and um, I can pick apart things to be dissatisfied with, but at the same time, like my geek cylinders are firing. Uh, seeing the DeLorean, time. yeah, on. seeing the DeLorean, and now we're getting Steven Spielberg directing the DeLorean, which uh, I realize mm -hmm. is a weird sentence, but. Uh, I, I can't wait. I mean, even though it'll be CGI DeLorean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks a little <laughs> CGI heavy, and I I don't know. We'll see. But you know, Spielberg has a history of adapting bad or mediocre books into really great movies. So we'll see. Like what Jaws. Happens. That's exactly what he did with Jaws. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. you guys read yep. Jaws? Uh, do you know about the book Jaws? I read it uh, mm -hmm. in high school. It is schlock. It I hear it's my, really not good. Yeah. It's like so. I remember. I don't know. I I, I guess because I learned this word. I, uh, it opens up with describing the girls on the beach and there's like a 16 year old uh, and her uh, her legs are just open just open enough so that you can catch a glimpse of her pudenda. And I was like, pudenda, what's that? Uh, and that's a feminist agenda, Jack. And you should understand <laughs> that, uh, uh, you know, not all men. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's it's very very like pulpy and uh, romantic novel uh, like sensual stuff in there like Fifty Shades of Grey shit, uh, and actually Richard Dreyfuss's character Matt Hooper uh, in the book uh, he's either from the town or for whatever reason uh, his older brother dated Lorraine uh, Lorraine Gray uh, Brody's wife. 
uh, and they start up a flirtation and there's a scene where they're in the car together and uh, they start quote unquote exploring each other and basically like feeling each other up and I think he maybe even fingers her uh, before mm. they go you know what this isn't right I don't want to cheat on my husband um, are you sure you weren't reading the world according to Garp? <laughs> no, I, I am. Uh, there, there's other books with fingering in the car, Corey. <laughs> what? All books should have it. Um, no, no. The part so, I love this in the Bible. Uh, but so the book is schlock, and the, the movie, I think, was also, the screen. original screenplay was probably kind of schlocky, but Spielberg, again, brought craft, and uh, he also probably had a hand in rewriting the screenplay. Uh, and it has a lot of his familiar themes about fatherhood and and family. Um, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it, it it's funny. Jaws is like two different movies. The first half is his great, great underdog story about this new sheriff from New York who has to deal with the townies, and he's just trying to do his job and do what's best and not have any more people get eaten. And he's also got the stress of his family and his wife and his kids. And then the second half of the, is this like character play with these three guys trapped on a boat together. Um, it, I just I love this movie so much. Yeah. Yeah, and so that they, part of the movie is where I kind of really love it is the the three guys on the boat when they're that 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 is to me like all the stuff at the beginning is good and important and lays out the groundwork and the fact that the sheriff is fighting against the mayor of the town because the mayor is like, no, we have to save the town by by letting everybody come here. This is the one point of the year where we get the most money and it saves the shops and everything. So I'm going to risk everybody's safety because I know that they're sharks. But otherwise, we lose our, our livelihoods by not having the big speeches. It's, a, it's a great conflict. It's a great antagonist yeah. because he's got a point, um, you know, but uh, but uh, it, it, it's a perfect kind of bad guy. It's like not not super one note evil. Although I got to yeah, point yeah. something out that I noticed uh, watching it uh, a couple of days ago. So they're worried. They don't they don't want to mention sharks and they don't want to close down the beaches because all the businesses are going to lose their money. Uh, it's a small town that thrives on the summer season. Uh, but so they, they so the, there's a scene where everybody's now on the beach and everybody's afraid to go in the water and the mayor is like pressuring people to go in the water. He's walking around like, hey, why don't you go in the water? Why don't you go in the water? Right. And then I was like, wait a second. So everybody's still going to the beach. There's, if anything, this will actually increase commerce. You ever go to a beach town in the summer? Like the mini golf is pretty much free before 5 p.m. because nobody goes because everybody's at the beach. You know, nobody's buying ice cream. Nobody's buying pizza. Nobody does that until around 5, 6 p.m. after everybody's left the beach. If anything, if nobody's going in the water, you, your hot dog sales are going to skyrocket. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. This, this is pre, pre food truck. This is pre <laughs> send the taco truck down to the beach and sell the tacos, and that we can close a restaurant itself, but we can go do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. And, but at the same time, Brody, who believes that there's sharks and believes that everybody should stay out of the water, also lets his fucking kids hang out down there. Well, yeah, he don't go in the bay or just stay yeah. in the bay, which is uh, apparently this giant body of water where the shark is fine to go into. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that that's actually a great scene, too, where uh, they're playing on the dock uh, and the, the wife is like, uh, I can't. Uh, why can't I think of her name? Um, and uh, she says, uh, and Corey gave me this super useful Google Doc I am not using, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she uh, was what's, what's the name? It's uh, Ellen. Ellen. So she's like, uh, go easy on him. It's his birthday. Let him play in the boat. Uh, and then uh, she's reading this book and she see, flips to a page and it shows that sharks can bite right through the boat. And she's suddenly like, get out of the boat. Michael. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those like fi family dynamics make the movie. That's what's missing from uh, Sharknado. Besides yeah. having like shittier actors and, and shittier uh, screenplay and shittier effects, it's really they're they're more concerned with, hey, let's get this shark to eat as many people as possible. Whereas Jaws has a different agenda. It's well, Sharknado movie. isn't really a ripoff of Jaws as much as no. it's a ripoff of Evil Dead. Uh, it, it's much more of a, it, yeah. not even Evil Dead as much as Ash, uh, the Army of Darkness one. That's what it's trying to be. Okay. All right. That makes more sense. I, I, and yeah, you're right. They're not trying to make Jaws. They're, it's just another shark movie. But uh, but that's what, I guess what I'm saying is I'm drawing a line. Although Army of Darkness is a good movie. So I don't, I don't yeah, no, it's a great movie. Um. But like like Mike had said before, it's it's really just this good movie that has horror elements to it. It's you know, and, and in terms of like you're you're invested in the characters, you actually get uh, very quickly you get uh, invested in Brody as the protagonist, and you know you want him to succeed, and you want him to, you know, get the mayor to turn his back and but not lose his kids' respect. There's this great scene where the the kid the, he's drinking because he's depressed, and 
Uh, the kid has a glass of milk and he's mimicking his father and everything Brody does, his son does. I love that scene. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's such, really touching. It adds a great level of humanity and family to that character. I mean, that's the big thing is the big three, Brody, Hooper, and Quint, are such well-written characters. And, you know, they don't have a ton of time, each of them on screen, to develop their characters. But for a summer blockbuster or a summer action movie, um, they each have a little, little tidbit, which really, I mean, it's a couple lines, but it really informs their character and you know exactly who you're watching and you can sympathize with them, I think. I mean, even, you know, Matt Hooper, who is arguably the most insufferable character out of them all, is still really well written and you, you kind of go along with him. You know, he's kind of the brains, uh, I guess. Um, yeah. Who, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, sorry, I need to point something out. Um, I just got uh, so me and Matt uh, share activity goals on our Apple watches uh, as incentive. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's incentive for us to work out more. So if if one of us hits our calorie goal or our workout goal, the other one gets a little buzz and says, "Hey, uh, Jack just uh, ran a mile. You know, you got to beat him." Anyway, I just got a, an activity alert that Matt just uh, moved two hundred percent more than his goal. I'm watching you just sit there. Oh, you're you're rotating your office chair. Is that it? Is that how you get in your gallery calories? No, the it's it's because I moved. It's every time you here. here. <laughs> That's true. There's that. Let me I, I got to be honest. All of my Arch. my exercise goals usually buzz when I'm taking a poop. So <laughs> it's usually, um, usually that's I, when I... <laughs> I only hit it because I moved my bedroom, the spare bedroom, and every door in my house today. <laughs> so... All right. Um, yeah. Another note, though, that, that really great scene, the touching scene with the little kid uh, drinking milk while his dad drinks beer, <laughs> that little kid ends up dying in the first scene of Jaws 4. So... That's sad. He had a yeah. good life. He made it to Jaws 4. Yeah, yeah that's true. He lived... Uh, yeah, but that means he was in Jaws 2 and 4, uh, if ever so briefly. That's not that great of a life. <laughs> well, in 2, is he, it's been a long time since I've seen 2, but aren't both kids trapped? I mean, 2 is basically kids out on the boat. Aren't both of Brody's children on both. the boats? Right? The older one definitely is. The, the one that ends up becoming Dennis Quaid uh, in the third one and star, the star of the fourth one. He's recast. Uh, I think the baby brother's also there. Okay. Also, do you ever notice, so the way the sharks are killed in the four Jaws movies are the way the four sharks in Deep Blue Sea are killed in that order. Or, and maybe not in that order, no. But one is blown up with a compression tank, one is electrocuted, one is uh, pierced. Uh, right. And I forget how the, the third Jaws third one, was he blown up or was it it drank himself to death. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jaws 3D, I'm sorry, that's what it's called. When did Jaws uh, 3D come out? 83, 82. Oh, so it was the first like 3D nipple twisting? No, I, don't, I don't think so. Because 3D was really big in the late 80s, early 90s, and then it disappeared because it sucked, and then it came back with the advent of real 3D. Right, right. You didn't have the red, blue, you had the... So but I it comes was, in was, cycles. It was big in the 50s and 60s. There were probably... Some, there was a handful was of... It really? My, yeah, that's like if you ever see all those old like uh, stock footage of, of 50s theater audiences with the red and blue glasses. Yeah, I feel like that's the whole advent sure. of the red, and blue, the red and blue glasses. Yeah, And it's weird that it goes through these phases, and it's only now kind of catching on, but I feel like it's still not going to catch no, on. No, it's, it's faded out, actually, um, because of Dunkirk. So uh, because Dunkirk was so successful as an IMAX movie in 2D. Without 3D, yeah. Yeah, IMAX has publicly said like, oh, wow, so I guess the 3D doesn't matter. The IMAX does. So they're, they're going to restrict the number of 3D movies now be direct, as a direct result of Dunkirk's success. Oh, wow. Well. I well, always love when the film industry learns from overcompensating about one fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 the Hollywood either goes, ah, with the steering wheel, or they go, ah. With the <laughs> There's no in between. Yeah. That's a, well, that makes we, sense to we'll have to wait and see what James Cameron has to say about that with his five oh, yeah. Avatar sequels oh, uh, scheduled for 2121 now, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. You, you know what's fucked up? Remember when uh, Kill Bill came out and uh, Tarantino's like, yeah, maybe we'll do a volume three in 15 years. It's uh, That's next year. So if he wants to do uh, yeah. Kill Bill volume three, he can do it. Well, you know, he, I think he went on record saying that he wasn't going to do that, but he said he's only going to do two... 10 films, which means he has two left. So yeah. I don't know. I could see him making his 10th film, but I think he's grown a little bit since then. I think he wants to out epic himself. You know, I think he, he holds Inglorious Bastards as his kind of even, which I love Tarantino, but it annoys the shit out of me that he says it's his masterpiece through Brad Pitt in the last line of the film. 
Um, but he's gone in interviews and saying that, you know, he's competing with his class of filmmakers, Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, David O. Russell. And he says, like, I got to stay one one step ahead of these guys, you know, as they make better things like there will be blood. And uh, that's cool. I'm glad that's driving him. I don't see I don't see that result I, yeah. I think he's a little i think he thinks a little bit too much of himself and i'm a big tarantino fan i oh, love yeah. tarantino but i don't think he's as good as he thinks i don't think he's as perfectly genius as he thinks he is no he has i, no, I think there's a go ahead. go ahead he has no he's not shy about saying how great of a writer he is and you know sometimes he could definitely use a reality check but that's the problem is you're at the top of your game and everybody keeps saying how incredible you are at some point you gotta go i, I guess i'm really good <laughs> and then that, 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 that can drive you too, but maybe that also makes the work a little fresher. So maybe that's why he says he's only going to do ten movies because he feels like, well, I can only manage genius so many times, and I don't want to risk like making that twelfth film that uh, suddenly is a piece of shit and isn't well received. Right. So I've got to pour everything I can in these first ten. I, I agree. I think that there's there's a level of Tarantino that he hit early on that was incredible because we hadn't seen anything like that, and then after a while. You sort of get a feeling for his tricks and you you get an understanding of who he is and maybe some of the things he does the themes don't work out quite as well or he gets a little attracted to working with friends and stuff instead of like making things with with better people uh which is a kevin smith thing too like at some point kevin smith's movies went from being like i have to see every one of these to i'll wait and see when it hits cable <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean he took i think Especially once he said, I'm not doing the Buisk universe anymore, it kind of took a massive dive. And then kind of now he just floats in the level of below mediocrity. Yeah, um, now he's like, I can play it safe by fucking crowdfunding a film for $100,000 and it right. doesn't matter if it makes money uh, versus I have to really invest and get the. But, but it's the investing and, and trying something different and working with the film company gives you a cop out. Uh, or or Zach and Miri, which I really like Zach and Miri. It's, it's, it's a skew light. Um, but for the most part, it's it's these other films where it's like, I'm just doing this for a laugh. I'm just doing it for the kicks. Yeah. And when he goes back to try to make a skew films, there's that, like, I have to work at this again, and I have to get all these people together, and I have to gather all this, and then I have to convince Miramax or whoever to actually pay me for it. And yeah. And one of those things always seems to fall apart. That's like, and that's like Lucas and Spielberg, who are multi multi millionaires, and they have families, and they they're they're they have busy lives, so uh, they're content with just making directing a nine to five job where they show up, they can sit on the the director's chair, and they make some notes, and oh, you know what, this shot would be kind of cool. Uh, whereas Jaws, uh, Spielberg was hungry. He he really like yeah. he put he he put his heart and soul. Uh, I guess we can talk about it on on this. Uh, to me, it's just common knowledge, but. Uh, maybe to not everybody, but it, uh, it's notorious for how what a hellish shoot that was. Everything went wrong. Yeah. Supposedly, the shark was supposed to be in a lot of scenes, and uh, because the mechanical shark wasn't working, they waited till the end. And one of the, and and people say, "What a happy accident!" Because it's so great, uh, you don't see the shark until the end. It makes it scarier. I kind of think that's apocryphal. I have a feeling I was watching the movie. I was like. No, it wouldn't really make sense to have the shark in these scenes. I'm pretty sure that was Spielberg always planned to not show the shark, uh, and it just kind of became legend. But even that aside, the shark was broken, and uh, they were over budget, and the studio was really pissed off. They wanted to replace him. Uh, it was a really, really bad time for Spielberg, and that that usually makes good art when you're not being lazy. Yeah. But remember, if we had had CGI at the level of not even current levels, but like say ten years ago. Uh, or, or even before that, when The Matrix came out, if there had been that level of CGI available to Spielberg when he decided to do Jaws, would we have seen the shark more? Yes, we, uh, we had seen absolutely. it in the first scene. Yeah, because that yeah. They, because the again, if you're thinking dumb network types and not not people who are putting some thought into it, they're thinking, well, we the whole point is to scare people with this shark eating this person. Like we got to show the shark. You can't not show the shark. Uh, and I could easily see that being their line of thinking, even though not seeing the shark is what it's, it's you know it's shots of water and it's, it's the anticipation of when the shark is going to come in it's john williams incredible score that's yeah. why this movie is iconic yeah i mean i love there's uh you know in the in the scene where alex kittner is killed early in the film maybe 20 30 minutes into the film the only shot that you kind of see is his raft flipping over and you see what looks to be like maybe one or two fins it's really in indecipherable as to what specifically it is but just 
you can tell that it's something unnatural. And I think that lends a lot. Your imagination does the rest of the work. And then you kind of see like a blood spray and the horror takes over. Um, that shot's fantastic. And then you don't see, you know, the first scene, the, uh, when he's slumming the chum or whatever uh, that stuff is called, you know, that's the first big reveal, but I, that's at what minute 60 or something where if you look at Jurassic park, which I get is 20 years later and the industry changed a lot and Spielberg has grown, but you know, you see the uh, T-Rex what 35 minutes into the movie or something. And it's yeah. still a great movie and he is holding back. He's not overdoing it, but you know, you can tell, like, you want to get to the meat of, you want to get to the good stuff. You know? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's exactly what I'm saying is that shot is so iconic with Roy Schneider uh, throwing the chum in and suddenly the shark shows up and is our first real good look. And that's what makes me think that uh, Spielberg always planned to hold off because that shot wouldn't have had any weight if they were showing the shark earlier. And, and his reaction is so well done that just that step back and just like the the instant of my life just flashed before my eyes because this creature was right yeah, there and, yeah. and yeah. everything about that was this moment of holy shit this is real yeah so one of and the, yeah. this thing is well beyond the scope of my imagination was a great thing about that shot is um and this is just something that again keeps spielberg up in in the mastery level for me is uh just a real understanding of film is that shot is actually filmed in reverse they couldn't get he wanted roy schneider's head to snap up to where if you watch it again, he actually snaps up and it's almost like he's a, a board or a piece of wood or something, you know, he snaps up and they filmed it in reverse, him going down so that they could get, so he wouldn't have that kind of head shake back. He just kind of snaps up. It's almost cartoon-like if you watch it. It's very huh. unnatural. I never so noticed that before, yeah. Film. yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very, very clean jump up. I never, I didn't know that it was shot in reverse. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, also, Roy Schneider just kills it. Uh, you know, he's kind of just famous for Jaws and uh, Sequest and maybe for a little uh, for other people, French Connection. But he's not somebody who your mind goes to when you think of talented, like really good actors with on screen uh, like a presence. Uh, he is he makes the movie. If they had cast somebody else, I could easily see this movie not working. He's yeah. so perfect. I mean, that's another thing I think Spielberg did really well, especially more in the 80s. Not so much lately, but. He chose a lot of, not that he was no name. I mean, you know, I guess Dreyfus Scheider and Robert Shaw were all well known, but uh, they weren't mega stars. You know, they weren't Tom Cruise and, or DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but, you know, you look at a uh, movie like even, even Jurassic Park, you know, Sam Neill and Laura Dern, I guess Jeff Gola. I mean, they were names, but they weren't huge echelon for the level of blockbusters that the movies were they weren't uh quite at that level or et there's you know d wallace stone yeah and uh that's it you know, it's um, like, you know that, that that unknown guy he used for uh the terminal uh that actual authentic eastern european <laughs> actor he got oh so, yeah, tom so, hanks or something law, uh, <laughs> yeah uh yeah no roy schneider is great robert shaw is great uh, i think supposedly he and spielberg either he and spielberg or he and dreyfus didn't get along because shaw yeah uh he's because he's this like tough tough guy from england or ireland or scotland wherever he's from and I, I always it always makes me laugh this whole tough guy persona like uh him or uh de niro or pacino like you know cops in new york especially the film unit but uh, but it's just guidos in general like you know macho italian guys they worship the shit out of de niro and pacino because of, of godfather uh and it's funny because it's like these these macho guys who you know acting for fucking pussies, uh, but you know Robert De Niro, he's a tough guy, he's regular, he's you know he's authentic, and it's like it's so funny to me that they worship these guys who even if they are you know on the tougher side, your Robert Shaw's and your De Niro's, they still play pretend and they wear makeup, like you know, yeah. and I have nothing against. I have a lot of friends who are actors, and they, I have nothing against the profes profession, but these people who do worship these types do have something against, they do think less of that kind of profession. It's not, a, it's not the same as like working in the cement factory, making cement, you know, but, but it's, you know, Robert, like didn't Robert the Simpsons Niro, do that? But like Robert De Niro, he, he's not a cop. He's playing a cop in all these movies, but he's, you know, he's, he's memorizing lines and he's got makeup and yeah, it just, it always like the idea that Dreyfus and Shaw would have this like actual rivalry of like, uh, you're some, some, uh, 70s uh liberal uh hippie and i'm a tough guy from england and it's just like but yeah you're both actors you're both yeah. you're both making you're playing pretend for a living i i always find that funny you're doing it's like being one of the people who think chuck norris is the greatest motherfucker alive because it's <laughs> yeah 
he's he's been such a shitball in every fucking movie he's been in. But uh, <laughs> Chuck, Nor- Chuck Norris is a fucking tough guy. No, no. Do you hear I mean, him singing his own theme song? Lie. When yeah. he sings Walker, Texas Ranger, is that a tough guy thing to do? Like uh, like Frank Sinatra. Oh, you gotta worship Frank. It's it's Frank. It's like he's singing. I can't think of anything uh, sillier than that. You know. Ooh, look at me. I'm singing a song about how my girlfriend broke up with me. Ooh, I'm Frank Sinatra. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think know. the thing with Frank, though, is that he knew so many real mafia people who did respect him and and but love that, him for, they for the music him. alone and stuff. But that's why that's what that's what blows my mind. See, I I see very similar things with with uh, in my family, uh, uh, with like you know, singers and mob connections and stuff. And they they they're gravitated towards anybody with that kind of legit real celebrity. Uh, and right. the reason he was this tough mob connected guy was because these mob guys loved that he was famous. It was like a cycle. Uh, yep. And it's just so funny. It's like you guys kill people for a living. You run racket, you racketeering and prostitute rings, but you're 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 worshiping this guy who croons. It's it's just it, it always got it always made me laugh. So anyway, I was thinking that the whole time watching this movie because Shaw uh, is playing like this real tough as nails motherfucker, and he does such a great job. His accent is a little wonky, but uh, oh, he's so great. And then when he tells a story about how he was in the navy and. Uh, his ship got sunk, sunk and yeah, they were all just yeah. getting picked off by sharks. Oh, I f- totally forgot about that scene. Yeah, that scene was great. It's legendary. And, 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 and Quint as a character, one, I've got a friend, uh, Jess Hickman, who is a comics artist and and she named her cat Quint after Josh. She is like the biggest nice. shark lover I know. And she does a comic about her cat called Space Quint, which is cool. Um <laughs> But but Quint as a character is kind of like the the Captain Ahab of the thing, and you expect that he's going to be the one who wins out against the shark. You think he's going to be the one who who beats Moby Dick at the end or or something, and to have him go down, to to have him his character die uh, before the end of it is such a great turn to take because it changes the expectations. You see Quint and you see the tough guy and you see the guy who's going to save the whole fucking place even though we know that brody's been our hero since the beginning and now it's like oh shit we gotta yeah. see what can happen because Chicago brody has no experience yeah. um yeah no and uh it's funny because he's the only one that and spoilers obviously that he's the only one that ends up getting eaten by the shark uh, out, of, out of the three of them um in the book hooper actually doesn't make it uh he uh when, once that shark cage busts open he never comes back up oh man uh, Did anyone else think that the scene in which, um, so while they're closing the shark cage and they're like, "Hey, your glasses are on," and that whole thing, it was a little hom- homophobic. Wait, wait, what, what scene? So, um, homeboy is going. He, he's getting dressed. He's going into the cage. They're just about to drop him. Mm-hmm. The guy like taps when he goes, oh, "Your glasses are still on." I think there was a show how start nervous. to a gay porn. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was a show how nervous he was. Like he was really, really like. He's like, no, don't worry, it's a shark cage. I'll be fine. But you know, he knew there was a very good chance he was going to get eaten, and he was freaking out. And like, you know, he, oh, you know, I don't I, blame I, him. I just I remember watching. I was watching it, and I was like, wow, someone's sucking someone's dick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, when they had, when they were comparing scars, and they had one leg thrown over the other leg, I'm like, this is a little romantic. <laughs> this is like, not a boat. Is a completely different story. <laughs> Figure out who gets hard first. Is this the first famous scar scene? Like that's a trope in movies where everybody shows each other their scars. My favorite's in Loaded Weapon One with Emilio Estevez and uh, <laughs> Kathy Ireland. Uh, was, was, there, was this a, was this the first to do that? Because usually it is a man and a woman uh, showing each other their scars, and then it leads to a sex scene. Leading that's to almost sex. how it always goes. It is Swamp Thing Two and uh, yeah. uh, this. I mean, uh, Loaded Weapon, but uh, uh, this it's it's yeah, it's not. It's actually instead of a romantic sex thing, it's these two characters who were the most opposed to each other kind of finding some common ground. But I can't think of any... I don't, I don't know of any other option, uh, anything preceding that, but it's such a great scene. Like um, You have these two characters who supposedly hate each other, but of course, with booze, everyone comes together. You know, and They start <laughs> just kind of swapping the story. But I love the tonal shift in that scene where they're kind of laughing and giggling and uh, then... You know, the scars and the song, they're singing that song, uh, this old sailor song. Um, and Show then, me the way to go home. Right. And then he kind of, uh, he says, oh, what was that? You know, something or something or other. He says, no, that was the USS Indianapolis. And uh, Dreyfus's face just kind of changes immediately because he knows that 
he knows that name of the ship. He knows that story. It kind of seems like a seafarer's legend. You know, everyone knows the story of the USS Indianapolis, which is a true story. And, and this uh, was only 30 years after World War II. Right. Yeah. And it just kind of shifts. Like you see his face change and then the whole tone of the scene changes as well. And, uh, you know, Quint goes on with that great monologue, one of the best monologues, I think, in certainly of that decade. But uh, And now that's, you know, they kind of say, I've heard the argument that that scene is to blame for modern shitty blockbusters, maybe more so in the 90s when the blockbusters were just like, it's not a good movie. And just because one character has one scene that gives a little <laughs> bit of exposition about his character that right. doesn't make him a well-written character, you know. But in this film, it kind of does, you know. But then they kind of took that and ran with it. Um, it's the gremlin scene with uh, Phoebe yeah, Cates where yeah, she's talking yeah. about her dad at Christmas. Another and scene that I love. Watching Gremlins too. Yeah. And we will spoof the shit out of in Gremlins 3. Yeah. Which I, also, I love in Gremlins 2 how, you know, in the first movie, it's very touching. It's a great scene, great read by Phoebe Cates. But in the second movie, I like how she says, kind of starts going with it. And uh, doesn't Zach Gilligan kind of come up like, all right, all right, uh, come on, let's go. Uh, next scene. Move along. That would have been great if somebody did that to Quint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess the difference between that and other movies where you're right, it's like uh, you you just to put in this token scene and that's supposed to make it a fully fleshed out character uh, is that all of those decisions do inform every little detail before and after. So if you rewatched a movie again, now you say, oh, this is why Quint really hates sharks and, right. uh, and this is why he's an asshole and this is why he wants to make sure everybody in his boat knows what they're doing. Um, I, I, I bet you that's, I bet you those 90s movies don't have that where if you take that scene out, nothing really like there's there's just nothing there yeah. it's also, I think, you know the 90s movies they will they'll kind of throw in like a um oh this is uh, I, I don't quite know how to say this but just it's not it's not deep writing it's just like involving the wife or involving the kid or something like this this is an actual scenario that is so preposterous that you would never think like you would think if you're on a ship and a torpedo hits your ship you're going down Oh, you're probably going to drown or something like that. But you don't think about, oh, now I'm just bobbing in the water in the middle of the ocean and we're going to slowly get eaten by sharks with 500 of my friends, you know? And that's <laughs> something that I think, it, yeah, if you start thinking about it, you just think how terrifying that would be. And at night, there's nothing scarier than being on the ocean at night uh, yeah. when there is no land to be seen. And so I think, and especially the way that uh, Shaw reads, reads the stream, it just really uh, puts you right in there as a viewer and, uh, yeah, you can imagine how how fucking terrifying that would be. And like he's such an unlikable asshole uh, up until that point and like it really sucks when he dies. Uh yeah. like even oh. it's so close to the end. It's uh, you you really feel and the, the and to die by a giant shark like he literally is like gobbled up. He falls into the shark's mouth. That must have been so traumatizing. Fighting it the whole way. Fighting yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Stabbing it with the, the machete and everything doing everything he can and the fear in his eyes cuz he he talks about the shark's eyes looking at the shark's eyes. And the difference between when you see them normally and then when you see them coming at you and the whites glaze up. Like he he prophesizes yeah. how much fear he's gonna have in that moment. And and it totally he sells that terror. Oh, he sells that terror. Oh, yeah. oh, it's hard to watch. And it starts, yeah, it starts like with a clamp down on your knees, and you can imagine the pain of that alone. And then, you know, the next time you see him, it chomps down on his belly, and it's just like it's just like slowly chomp, chomp, chomp all the way up his body. Cool. And uh, yeah, he gives that final kind of, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and for Scheider having to, to watch it, for, for Brody sitting there watching that happen right. and seeing yeah. that and knowing that he's very likely next because where the fuck is he going to go? Yeah, he's on a right. sinking boat. He's terrified of the water, which is, you know, it's so easy. That screenwriting 101, give him some, give him conflict by having him hate the very thing he has to do, but he sells it. It's, it's sold so perfectly. It's, yeah. it's so well, yeah, oh, he must, you know, it's crazy. Um, by the way, uh, when they do the remake of Jaws, we need Mike Wallace to play Quint, if only for that death scene. Because I, want, I want him to be. Blah! Blah. I've been preparing all my life. <laughs> it's a good thing that you you spent that summer sailing a bomb out to another country. <laughs> method. I am method, if nothing else. Oh yeah.
Uh, and this it really is kind of a by the numbers book, even though it, uh, by the numbers movie, even though it is two separate movies, which I, I really appreciate. I, I you know I'm not crazy about three act structure. Um, there's also Chekhov's uh, oxygen tank. Chekhov's compressor. Yeah. Because I don't remember the, I don't remember them there being a scene. When I was rewatching it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, be careful with those tanks. You know that they could blow at any second. And I was like, "Oh, so yeah, that's why he shoots it in the like he it, it, he knew what he was doing." Yeah, the oxygen tank. Um... So the original, I think the original ending is just uh, the shark gets hit with a bunch of harpoons and then kind of slowly sinks to his death, uh, which is rather unclimactic. And Spielberg wanted to do the whole thing. Yeah, he wanted to do the whole thing with the oxygen tank. And I think it was the screenwriter, maybe one of the producers says, no, 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 this is preposterous. You can't do this. Um, You can't shoot an oxygen tank and it doesn't blow up. Like things don't work that way. Um, And I think his response was, I've had the audience here for 118 minutes. I can do whatever the hell I want in the last five minutes. I've got them right where I want them. Uh, and he, you know, and I admit the ending is very super cheesy and it kind of. That explosion is huge. <laughs> yeah, it is gigantic and uh, fish parts everywhere. And I don't, I don't know why there would be five. I don't know. Uh, and then he and Hooper are both stuck out in the middle of the water without a ship to get back on. And the radio had already been destroyed by Quint. So they're kind of in the situation that Quint had been in. Yeah. At the beginning, and right. you know, there's other sharks. Apparently, they caught a tiger shark like it was no big deal <laughs> a couple yeah. of days earlier. Uh, tiger sharks are actually more dangerous than great. They eat great whites, um, but uh, I, I I don't know if this is head cannon, um, but uh, so he's in the boat. He's and the boat's sinking, and he's panicking. Quinn had just died, and the shark is coming for him. And he grabs a tank and he just starts bludgeoning the shark. So I, I like to think that he wasn't pre-planning, like, I'm going to put the tank in the shark's mouth and then shoot the tank. I'm thinking, oh, he grabbed the tank because it was the only thing there and he started beating it. It got stuck in the shark, ate it, and it got stuck in his mouth. And then he saw it as a target. That's yeah. a little bit more believable. Because yeah. there's no more. way of pre-planning that. There's no <laughs> right. way. Yeah, I'll just get this tank. It, it, I'll get the shark to eat the tank. I'll, I'll cover it in quint guts or something. Yeah, I, my, my, my luck would be he would chomp down on it right away and blow us both up. And then, right. Then would go. <laughs> and I would have left a brief suicide note. Well, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> then you wouldn't have to kill yourself. You'd be uh, taking... <laughs> Death by shark. <laughs> Sui- suicide by shark. That's another great uh, band name. <laughs> we are suicide by shark. We still live in our parents' basements. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, it occasionally floods. <laughs> All right, so guys, are you ready to rate Jaws as ridiculous sure. as that might seem? Hey, guys, um, let's go sure. to the, let's go to the what? Fap Cave. <laughs> oh, Mike's never been here before. Probably never really even listened to the show. So What's the rating? He's listened. I'm pretty sure Mike's been to the Fap Cave once or twice. Yeah. Mm, not ours. He hasn't been to my Fap Cave. Oh, um, I built, once I bought my home, I built a fat cave. So. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Just got old. some black light hieroglyphics up on the walls. <laughs> home is where the fat cave is. Oh, oh, oh I'm so turned on. <laughs> <clears throat> fab cave is, uh, the, the fab scale is, uh, it's our three tier scale, zero to five. Um, rating the movie first, we do the feature. Um, that's going to be your story. How was it? Was it original? Was it interesting? Did you prefer the acting? Uh, we do it on a zero to five scale. Jack, uh, Mike, being our guest, you'll get to go first. Um, Jack, I guess you can go first because you're first on my little window of faces, and because I invented the scale. That too, sort of. <laughs> also known as the hippo scale. That's with not one, true. That, one less thing. The collaboration between us and uh, I guess Dan. Dan no, I stole it. I just no. You made it fucking, your own. You made it your it own. It was I like the Los too. Angeles riot. I broke your window and I stole it. No, you're you're doing the Tarantino thing. It's an homage, but it's its own thing, and it's great. I love. <laughs> I Thanks. love podcast terror. I love when you guys have our guests along. on. It's, it's great. It's I only listen to 90s percentile and uh, worst episode ever to figure out which guests we can have next. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a lot worse for guests. I, I'm, 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 I'm proud of our, I'm proud of our guests. One of these days we're going to get Mike Walls on. You'll say <laughs> one of these days, one of these days, uh, Booking, me and Matt were actually talking about this. Booking guests is the worst. <laughs> it's very difficult. It's, it's very it's difficult. Just, it's just the, the you have to get the dates and the times. It's just mm-hmm. it's so it's just so just energy draining. So, somewhere about an hour ago, I was booking our guests for next week, and just very much uncertainty. And yes, so I, yeah, I, we 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 banked me and Dan uh, 
banked so many episodes because Dan's away right now, and it's been it was so nice. And like now we're gonna have to jump into August with no, no prep, and I'm just like, oh god. I'm gonna, well, I if um, we're we're taking a break, so if you need a guest on worst episode ever, I'm free. Okay, good to know. We've been trying not to do guests on worst episode ever. Because oh, uh, thanks. Okay, I'll just go fuck <laughs> myself. <laughs> it's just it's already a three hour record with just the two of us. But uh, when we do have a guest, no, no, it's it's fine. I'll I'll just go fuck myself. No, I don't. I don't have pity, so that's not gonna work on me. I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I have your phone number. I don't need your pity. <laughs> Can you fucking give this a zero to five number, please? What's I don't remember what the F is. Feature. Feature. Uh, it's story, original, interesting. Uh, how is he acting? Uh, out of five, I'm gonna give five. Wow. Uh, Mike, how about you? Um. Yeah, I mean, as a whole, I have to give it a five. I'd be remiss if I didn't. Uh... Jesus Christ, Corey, how about you? I'm I'm not gonna lie. I I agree I, because God, it being damn it. the the predecessors to so many other things, but on top of that, it is a very interesting watch, and the acting was superb throughout. So I'm gonna give it a five. It's it's it probably four. the best. It's oh. probably the best movie you guys have ever reviewed since Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> it's no Santa Slay. <laughs> yeah, Santa Slay is a great movie. I only gave it a four because I thought some of it felt cheesy, but we're just going to move on before anyone gets pissed at me. Uh, the next one is Attention. Uh, this is going to cover your rewatchability. Would you purchase it? Would you recommend it to a friend? No oh boy. Um, so Jack. I did purchase it. I own it on DVD, but it's still in its shrink wrap. I was too lazy to get it up off the Doesn't couch. Doesn't matter. You're keeping it in mint condition. <laughs> yeah, no. So I just downloaded it. It was just easy. I didn't have to get off the couch. <laughs> Um, uh, God, I don't want to give this all fives. I'm trying to find flaws. I, I would say it's oh. slight, slightly not rewatchable in that you got to do, do once a summer, once a summer, once a year. I wouldn't watch but that it still has time. that has a higher rewatchability than 95% of movies. All right, five. I'll give it a five. Of course, right. I'm going to recommend it to everybody. I think it's one of the I, if I'm it's in my top five. Jurassic Park used to be in my top five, and I realized Jaws is a better Jurassic Park. Jaws is Jurassic Park is a remake of Jaws. Uh, the only extra thing is maybe the sense of wonder because of the dinosaurs. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's pretty much just a Jaws remake. Just a really well done, you know, monster movie. Um, Jaws is better. Jaws is top five Spielberg. Jaws is top 10 movies all time. Top 15, maybe. Uh, it's got it's to get about five. All right. Uh, Mike, how about you? Um, yeah, at, uh, at the cost of not being a contrarian, I have to echo everything Jack said. The only reason I don't own this movie on, uh, four formats is because I've seen it 10,000 times already. So, uh, I can't say I can't not recommend it to anybody. It's a must see. But I need a number. Oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> That's a must see. I love it. I've seen it a million times. Uh, zero. I'll give it a one point. <laughs> uh, Corey, how about you? Um, here, here's the thing. I, I, as much as I think the movie is great, it is not the kind of movie that I go looking for. It's fucking sharks. Um, <laughs> I, I felt perfectly okay. I felt better once I started watching it than I did going into rewatching it because I was like, oh, I got to watch Jaws again. And it, it's, it's one of those things I'm not super excited about. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Um, based strictly on my tastes, but if anybody, if some magic person showed up and said, I've never seen a shark movie, what one would you suggest? <laughs> it would, of course, be right after Shark Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> Jaws. Yeah, And we appreciate your sacrifice, Corey, for, for uh, you knew you were going to, that horrible traumatic experience you had, and you sat down, you gave it another go. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes you do uh, things for your friends. <laughs> I went slightly... <sighs> I went uh, slightly lower than Corey. I give it a three, um, mostly because I don't know. I, I I'm not big into shark movies and the whole water thing. Water doesn't scare me. I just am fat. Never learned how to swim, so that's something that I deal with in my life. Um, but on the flip side, I still thought it was a very good movie. And to kind of uh, kind of echo what Corey said, is if someone was like, "I really want to watch a shark horror movie. Which one do I watch?" It would obviously be Jaws because Shark Exorcist is a little more difficult to find. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so in demand. Yeah, it's just such a high in demand movie. They only they don't have the server space to uh, to show it to everybody. I don't know if I can watch it. It's a little too real for me. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, last up, we have the Panic. Uh, this is going to cover your scariness, your effects. Were you surprised? Did you have a hard uh, time keeping your poop in? 
<laughs> it, it's got some really perfect scare moments. Uh, I think the scariest moment is probably when uh, in the middle of the movie when uh, um, uh, Hooper is um, scuba diving at night, which first of all, just wait six hours, you idiot. Uh, and he's scuba diving at night and the, guy, <laughs> and the guy's uh, head just plops up into the, into the frame. Uh, that's a great scare. The opening is great. Uh, the moment we talked about where the, the first big close-up of the shark is great. There's some really, really great scare stuff. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's not the scariest movie in the world. It's, 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 I would find us movie, a movie underwater, underwater movie scare. I water, I do find water very scary and drowning very scary. Um, but this, not so much, um, uh, four. Mike, how about you? Um, yeah, I'm actually on that scale. I'm going to have to go a little lower just because on the, when I look back at the things that have scared the shit out of me over the years, Jaws isn't high on that. I, I watch it a lot more as a good movie. And, you know, as a filmmaker, I can kind of pick apart what I like about the movie from Spielberg's perspective. But, uh, yeah, the the scene at night is great with the head and the pop out is great. But, um, yeah, I'll go, I'll go three on that. All right. Corey? I, I like the fact that it mixes things like you just mentioned, the, the jump scares which are classic scares in, in horror movies, but it also gives you anticipation scares. It gives you the, the feeling of something's going to happen. You know it's going to happen, and it's not so much the fear of like something jumps out on the screen, but rather just, oh, shit, this girl is going to get eaten, and we, we know it's going to happen. It's not a surprise. It's still fucking terrifying because of the nature of, of what this is. Uh, so I'm going to land in between you guys. I'm going to go 3.5. Nice. And uh, props uh, again to John Williams. I mean, that, that score. Yeah. Just yeah. Incredible. Oh, that's true. We didn't talk about that at all. Yeah. It's, it lends a lot to the movie. Yeah. Let's not get into the score. I don't have enough hours in the day <laughs> to talk about the score. So let's and... talk about your score, Matt, for this category. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, g- I give it a two because I didn't find it that terrifying. I uh, could see how it was would be very scary if you hated water or I think Mike just threw up. Um, <laughs> I, thought was, hit- I thought he was making a latte. <laughs> <laughs> Putting a leaf in his espresso. Um, I could see how this would be very scary if you hated water, hated sharks, um, or this was 1975 when we watched it. It being 2017, didn't find it that scary. Um and I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Sometimes I watch these movies in not the best headspace after long nights or heavy drinking. So it's not the, the most effective on me. So, yeah, yeah. I give it a two. It's okay. We're not going to disown you. <laughs> it's my show. You can't disown me. <laughs> Get out. That's it. You're done. I should say it's Get my show. It's, it's Corey. AFC. It is Corey in my show. I never no, ever. It's, it's our audience's show. It's We've always show. said that it's it's a show for the fans. Fuck them, uh, even though poor <laughs> them because seven of them us do it. But whatever. If we're gonna continue to steal shit from worst episode ever in nineties percentile, we're gonna belittle all of our listeners, <laughs> tell them how much we hate them and how useless they are in this world. Well, if there's one thing you guys have stolen from us uh, perfectly, I think is uh, the chemistry between you guys. It's get, just, it gets better every every time I'm on. It's just even better than the last. You guys are you guys are such a great team. Are we all gonna fuck right now? Here's how I got this scar. <laughs> Don't ask oh the my question. God. Just accept the consent. Someone give me a thigh to put my thigh over. <laughs> Real quick before we, we start doing our, our closing here. But uh, last night after we played our show, I was just about to leave it. Some guy comes out and starts telling me about how he bruised his ribs at Lamb of God last week. Lifts up his shirt, shows me the bruise and all this, this bandage around him. It was it was certainly uh, this is how I got this scar type of situation. Nice, nice. He wanted to fuck you. Uh, I'm pretty sure he wanted my P inside of his M. <laughs> but I said, no, thank you, sir. I'm I need a matching home. bruise on my rectum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my butthole's already purple. I'm going to go home to a nice set of B's with some D's in my bed. <laughs> That's boobs and dogs. I, I like it better when you don't explain what the letters are. <laughs> yeah. it's just, I'm it's just going to go G's with some M's and some little L's and Q's. And when we get out of here, I'm going to make some P's and some T's. I'm going to go and then I'm gonna, sign. I'm going to I'm gonna M my L. And then after that, I'm probably going to go to the bar and purchase a P. <laughs> I'm going to put the K into the D and then the... Uh, yep, because I got no F in my F. And... Yeah. and you can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at 805-328-3966. You can email us at pod at gncast.com 
Uh, you can leave us a message on our website. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram podcast tear. And you can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any of your favorite podcasters. Uh, please leave us some feedback so we can read it on the show. Talk about how much we love you. Um, we recently found out that you can't rate podcasts on Google Play. So you can leave reviews on Google Play. It's- get your shit together, Google. Yeah, all subscription options can links can be found at gncast.com so subscribe. And finally, you can join us on our Facebook page uh, under the Galactic Network for the whole network. Um, Jack, we'll start with you. Where can the people find everything that you do? Sorry, I got distracted from Mike's wife. <laughs> Damn it. So I was wondering because when we had your, your when we had Ben on, there was like halfway through his wife like walked in and Ben just goes, You're on camera, and she just stopped. <laughs> and, like, old, and I was like, I'm really impressed that uh, Mike's wife hasn't strolled through yet. She's now peering down at me uh, from the staircase, like around the corner, like a cat. Like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> at least everybody, at least everybody has their clothes on, and it's not super awkward. Like you, not wearing pants right now. Not wearing pants. Couldn't find them. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you can find me at Jackie No Breaks. That's my Twitter. It's also my Instagram. Uh, I did a rare selfie yesterday. I saw you liked it, Matt. Thank you. I, I did. Um, I liked it while pooping. <laughs> that's that's all I ask. <laughs> uh, and uh, obviously, my podcasts are at We Studios Pod, W E E Studios Pod, and you can get uh, all the information for the, our Simpsons podcast, our '90s podcast, and definitely check out Sync Points. That's where we do commentary tracks over the actual movie, and we did a great one with Mike uh, called uh, over Superman Returns. Uh, if Mike's a big Spielberg fan, he's also a big, big, big Superman fan. Uh, so that was a really fun, God, two hours and 45 minutes, whatever that the length of that movie was. I think it's more like nine. But. <laughs> it felt like nine, yeah. Oh, sorry, wepodcast.com, wepodcast.com. That's, that's, the, that's where you get everything. It's just, it's just easy to just go there and figure out the rest. Absolutely. Mike, how about you? If, if you even want people to find you, the seven listeners uh, of this podcast. And stalk me on the internet uh, at Twitter. I'm at uh, Mike Walls Faux Real F O, and oh uh, on Instagram <laughs> because it's me. It's authentic, just so everybody knows. Um, <laughs> and uh, my Instagram Cerebral Wallsy, and uh, you can find some of my voiceover. <laughs> oh boy, uh, you can find some of my voiceover work at um, both Karate Tortoise uh, with Mike Diaz, and also I believe past guest of Podcast of Terror Brett Zebarth. Yep. Um, all three, all, um, Mike has been on here. Uh, Billy Hiller's been on here, and Brad Zipar. Yeah, all good people, and uh, and Anna Chang and um, Christina Miller. Yep. yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, check me out at Brett's work. Uh, that is TexasTardigrades dot com. I play uh, Louis. So. Oh shit! You're part of Texas Tardigrades too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. Louis. They all just fuck each other. Oh yeah, pretty much. They're like they're like the state of Alabama. We're well, no, like, but when they when they fuck each other, they produce good content. The state of Alabama just produces more Alabamans. Oh boy, <laughs> Corey, where can people find you on the internet? That's uh, go to donutscomics.com. That is the place that I help publish uh, and sometimes write comics with my friend Levi Krause. Terrific! You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Untapped because I'm an alcoholic at Matt the Lifeguard. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to another episode of the podcast. Here, we will talk to you guys next week. <laughs>